Astron Tech pole position went to Dylan O'Keefe, but he won't start from that position today. It'll leave the front row to Will Brown, the man who wrapped up the series at Sandown just a few weeks ago. Tony Delberto and Aaron Cameron, his best qualifying result of the season starts out of four. Nathan Morecambe and Andre Heimgartner on the next row. An amazing season it's been so far. Will we have a new winner or will Will Brown drive off into the distance? The lights go out and we get underway here at the Ben Motorsport Park in South Australia. Tony Delberto has got the best start here. He'll lead the field down to turn number one. It wasn't the great start for Will Brown. He's going to get swamped here as he and Tony Delberto go side by side. They fan out to three and four wide into turn number one. Oh, they tiptoe their way through. They stay side by side. But everybody looks like they're safely through. And Brown come back from all of that. Will Brown gets back on top. Leads them from Tony Delberto. Nice start by his teammate, Nathan Morgan. Look at this. Elbows out. The VW of Aaron Cameron. Looks aggressive. Dives under brakes there. And he'll get it done. Up into third. And Chris Pithler wants a slice of the action too. He'll make up one spot and all of a sudden Morecambe loses two because Jordan Cox gets the job done as well. As around the backside of the circuit, Pithler tries the outside. Can't be done here at the Ben Motorsport Park. You're in car with Andre Heimgartner. That's Jason Bright ahead as he works his way through the field. He's up in eighth position so far. Lap one of 14. Look at this, Angelo. Great move by Chelsea Angelo and that's on the Kangan Institute car. Teammate Andre Heimgartner. And looked like to do it with ease as well there. On the run between 12 and 13. Back in car with a triple seven. So Angelo on her return moves ahead of Heimgartner. In this one, puts herself up into the top 10 position now. It's a round to complete the first lap. Oh, oh and it's there's cars everywhere. One into the gravel, it's Angelo. Heimgartner also involved in this one and Liam McAdam. What has happened there? This might tell us what happened down at the second last turn. Oh, McAdam came in. He was on the grass before he got to the final turn and into the Dare Ice Coffee entry. There's the replay for the Kangan Institute car. And he was trying to turn in the end. He faced the field in the wrong direction. Come look at this. Alberto trying to get as much warmth and temp as possible into those tyres. Russell Ingle defensive in the background there in the Castrol entry. He's got a bit of a guard flapping up there on his Melbourne Performance Centre Audi, car number 100, as we go back to green flag racing here at the Ben Motorsport Park. There he is with Moff just behind him as the field settled back in. Look at the margin. Brown has got already. It's out to over a second. Alone from Tony D'Alberto. Aaron Cameron with Chris Pither on the tail of him and the Renault Megane as they work their way down to the hairpin. And look behind him. Here comes Jordan Cox looking for the move. And he's got the field like Morecambe and Bright just behind him here. Aaron Cameron looking good in that VW. Chasing down Tony D'Alberto. It's helped Will Brown. He's got the fastest lap of the race so far and a two-second almost advantage over Delberto. I remember last time we were here in June, we had changeable conditions, but primarily it was freezing cold here with damp conditions. We had a wet race here on the Saturday. So the first real dry race we've had at the Ben Motorsport Park. Delberto and Cameron arguing over second and third here. As we now look at Cameron, Delberto covers him off nicely, damage. parks it down the middle. That is a lot of damage to car 62 on the passenger side of the Astra down there in the pits. Well, Cameron thought about it on Dalberto, but all those years of experience from Tony D covered him off nicely. We're working lap seven, halfway home here, through the backside of this Ben Motorsport Park course. Oh, Someone's off in the dirt. Is that Piffa? Maybe it was Chris Piffa. He's pushing hard in that Renault Megane. Morecambe's got speed on his side, but he no, understeers off. Off goes Nathan Morecambe. The right front's gone. The wheel parting company with the front of his car and is out of this race. Meantime, Aaron Cameron to the inside, change of position. He goes up to second now, and now Tony D will do the fighting here as they complete another lap. Oh, Chelsea Angelo, good to see you out of the car. That was a huge hit. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Look, I'm a little bit sore on my left-hand side and my rib on the right, but it's just a shame because we were up to probably like eighth or ninth at the time, and then next minute we get an absolute shunt into the second last corner. I mean, we're all professional racers. Shit like this should not be happening at all. Heading for the checkered flag, and it's all done, all clear. Well done to Will Brown. Banks another victory in that Hyundai. What a year it's been. Aaron Cameron, that'll be huge for him in that fight for second position. As we pick up the revs and get set for the charge to turn number one, we get underway. 14 laps. Great start from Moffat already. He's rounded up two cars in the Renault Megane, the black and yellow entry. 
We jump in car with Tony D'Alberto as Aaron Cameron looks to cover him off on the run down to turn number one. He defends the line towards the first turn. Will Brown will lead us in. John Martin on the outside. Oh. They're three wide. They can't do this, surely. Martin gets a bit crossed up coming into that first turn. The rear stepping out on the car. Coming through Jordan Cox. Nice move on the Honda in the Alfa Romeo. Good work. Looks like the triple seven of Andre Heimgartner falling back into the clutches there of, of Martin. There's a little bit of a gap to that VW in front of them. Tim Brook got the wheels on the dirt on the outside of turn oh. number five. That's McDougall with this from the outside of Pitha, who's on the charge from 19th on the grid. That's the second of the Gary Rogers Motorsport repaired. Renault Magans won't get the job done there. He'll lose two positions as the field hustle for positions on coldish tyres. We'll jump in, come on Andre Heimgartner through the turn seven, eight, nine and ten complex on lap number one. You can see the Peugeot, a couple of cars, but he's made up some ground. So already Aurelien Comte is on the charge. Everyone talking mad about how different the cars are on our second visit to the Ben Motorsport Park. We're all still learning in the early part of the season when we visited here. Now, armed with all that knowledge, armed with all that experience, they are loving being back for a second crack at this venue. Setups are different to our first, first time here. So too is Aaron Cameron, Rusty on the charge. He gave Will Brown a big hurry up there at turn 14. And now arriving on the scene is Jordan Cox. Cameron on the defensive and making Jordan Cox go the long way around as Will Brown gets a slight margin. Four tenths. Yes, yeah, not much of a margin, but it's breathing space. A swarm of turbocharged four-cylinder engines. Lights on for Nathan Morkham as he comes through. Cameron trying to defend Jordan Cox. In the background there, Compte and Dylan O'Keefe fighting away. So O'Keefe's not been able to clear the Frenchman. The busy little battle pack, isn't it, though? Piffa to the inside of Alexandra oh. Whitley. Just enough. I mean, Piffa was taking no for an answer at turn number three. Gets the job done. Puts himself now up towards the back of the top 10. He's on the charge to Russell Ingle. Morecambe working him down to turn six. Here comes the Rondo HMO customer racing car to the inside. And Ingle just gives him enough of an in, but will have the better line. But superior drive from Morecambe gets the job done at the hairpin. For the lead. Familiar with. And now changing the lead at the front here with Aaron Cameron. So that's happened coming through the backside of the circuit. So the Victorian gets ahead of the man from Toowoomba. And now he'll do the chasing aboard car number 30. Chains on, that's the story. So Brown makes a blue. Look at that for a save. Great work by Will Brown. As we keep an eye on Dalberto with Moffat squirming under brakes in the Renault Magan. We join him at the right time as he climbs the curbs. Did he get it done? I would say yes. Now, now, remember, all of these things we're just watching affect the fight for second in the championship. Tony D'Alberto was second in the points coming into today's two races because Cameron is fighting for second as well. Cameron leads the race. That's all really positive stuff for Aaron Cameron. Now it's Morecambe to the inside of Martin, thanks to Aaron Noonan down in pit lane. So Morecambe sets up John Martin and closes the door nicely. Textbook move there at the hairpin. I reckon the heart rate was up there too. It looked like <laughs> the Hyundai was dancing. He was maxed out under brakes. One of those calls where you go, will I, won't I, will I, won't I? And he went, yep, I'm going to send it. Look at him, he sends it in here. Aaron Cameron has the lead, 1.92 seconds. Back to Will Brown and Jordan Cox. Oh, Brown gets sideways. That hurts him. Jordan Cox, opportunity here on the outside. Not ideally placed for the left-hander, but Jordan senses an opportunity. And so does James Moffat. Brown's battling a little bit here. Watching John Martin battling oh. the VW Golf. Little bit of contact between the pair of them there. As they came into that first turn from Will Brown. Here we go, back with Moff now. Well, time is running out. Lock up from the front. Was that enough to open? No, it won't be. We'll stay in car with Moffat down the bottom of the hill here. Through turn 15. Across at 16. But Aaron Cameron looking good here for his first ever victory. What a great story for this youngster, as we said, has come through karting. We wondered what sort of talent he had. The team were in, no doubt about it. Aaron Cameron gets the win in car sales TCR Australia and eyes up second place in the championship. He can do no more than that, Matt. That's the perfect play. This young man is off the back of a breakthrough win in this sport, but little time to enjoy it. You've got to focus on this incredible fight for second now. Yeah, last race of the year. Really want to round it up with another win, but uh, also the main goal, beat Tony D. Pull the pin and go for it. Pretty much, yeah. Have a crack. Hopefully it comes off.
Here's the final round of the championship. Set for a start now. Can Aaron Cameron get second in the series? Will Brown, with those clutch issues, doesn't struggle off the line. He's away in the Honda, in the Hyundai, I should say. But it's the Hondas. Look at them in the background. Look at this fight here. <laughs> the Alfa Romeo of Jordan Cox. Cameron's been swamped here. Cox will lead them from the Renault. Brave stuff from Moff. Aurelien Comte in the Peugeot. P11, I think, at the moment. I'm worried about where the Hondas are at the same time, Matt. I'm trying to figure out what that means in championship terms. Oh, sideways again. Was that Pitha in the Renault? So they're all attacking on cold tyres here. We, we have a selection of photographers, and I'm sure they were down at turn number one with arguably the picture of the year just then. They were four and five wide heading down to turn number one, but when the dust settled, Jordan Cox leads this motor race down the backside of the circuit for the first time in the final race of this year's car sales TCR Australia Series. You're watching the Peugeot 308 of Frenchman Aurelien Comte coming through the field now. He's up to 11th position already. Tony D'Alberto was in position 10 the last time through. Here's Ingle. Hustles out wide. That's Allen. Let's get an update, Cam. Jason Bright has a broken anti-roll bar. Jason Bright, so he is not going to be a contender in this race. Oh, it's all happening, isn't it? In the final race of the year, through turn number one, Cameron about to be passed by Andre Heimgartner through turn two and three. But, but they'll be telling him, they'll be keeping him up to speed on the radio at Melbourne For Performance Centre about where his rival is. Tony Delberto in 15th. Noons? Rusty, you're exactly on the money. That's exactly what they've done at Melbourne Performance Centre. They know where Delberto is. They know that he doesn't need to fight with Heimgartner or Comte who's behind in that Peugeot. They've told him you just need to run where you are and you'll get a job done. Cox to the top here. James Moffat in tow to come back down the hill here at the Bend Motorsport Park. So, Dalberto has gone up to 12th position, while Aaron Cameron is 7th. The gap is 10 points between the two of them. Advantage to Cameron oh. off the track is Russell Ingle. And that's at the top of high speed for the Castro Melbourne Performance Audi. Oh, wow. That's on the circuit. Trying to pick up how far up the circuit it is towards the top of the hill there. That's on that little short straight between turn 13 and 14. Here's the Actron Air replay, and we catch it as the Castrol car was spinning out of control across the grass here. But now Morecambe for second place on Moffat. Great job by Nathan Morecambe. Moff's better position for the next corner. Gets the elbows out and retains P2. Terrific. Oh, man. More dramas now for Moffat. We saw him slowing as we went to Aaron Noonan in the pits, and now the car has come to a stop. It's off the circuit. It's on the GT circuit here. Will Brown holding on to that fourth place. Aaron Cameron ideally would love to clear Will Brown. That might help him. Just a little bit more breathing space in the fight for second. Brown's not going not to give them that easily. Particularly with Nathan. Oh, off goes! Off goes Jordan Cox! Jordan has left the track of the Alfa Romeo in the lead. Nathan Morecambe leads here at the Bend Motorsport Park. Is that a failure on the front left? It was limping down as he went across the track. Actron Air replay now. In car with Andre Heimgartner. That's Aaron Cameron ahead. And the triple seven. Wow. Makes the move, so that's a big change. He goes up in a fourth spot with that one. And that means that Cameron is only one place in front of Tony Delberto. Oh boy, Noons, this is building. It is. I've just ducked into Melbourne Performance Centre. Blake Smith and Troy Russell are here. I don't want to dive in. I know Blake's busy here. Is that your car, car two, that's off song? Yeah, he's reported a loss of power. So at the moment, we're just trying to bring it home. That'll probably hand uh, P2 to Tony D. But that's the way it is. It's about his body. He would have had his bad luck earlier in the year, and we've got ours now. 50,000 bucks is on the line for them to finish runner-up in the series. This has been an amazing year. It's got a few twists and tails left, huh, boys? Great work, Noons. Man, our hearts sank here. Uh, here we go. So Cameron fighting fighting with Tony Delberto, but it's with one arm behind his back, as you've just heard. Delberto will get back in front. That move could be for 50 grand cash and second in the series. Can you believe it? Hyundai's likely to wrap up the year with a first and third in race 21 of 21 for our inaugural year. Tony Delberto in fifth place 
and looking like sealing second for the season. We'll wrap up a beautiful first year in this sport with Nathan Morecambe taking it out of the Ben Motorsport Park. Well done to Chris Pitha in the Renault. And here is your champion, Will Brown, for season 2019. And now he can officially celebrate the awarding of the champion trophy to Will Brown from HMO Customer Racing. <laughs> It's time to celebrate, gentlemen. The podium is yours. Michael King, you've had your first drive of your TCR car in amongst a big pack of other TCR cars. What's your take? It's um, a whole new level for me, a whole new ball game. Um, but yeah, phenomenal. Um, car's exceptional. Um, the other guys out on the track are great too, and, and uh, trying to keep up with them is a challenge. Have you got a chance to follow some of the regular guys out there? Have you had a chance to sort of get a feel for where you're at? Trying to. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're quite quick. Um, having very limited time in the car doesn't help me, but uh, yeah, I've tried my best to keep up with some of them and picking up some different bits and pieces around the, around the track, so it's, it's sort of helping get the time down a little bit. In what areas do you feel you need to find a little bit more time? Oh, mate, brakes. Um, it's completely not what I'm used to. I've never driven slicks before, um, and finding a limit of those tyres is just unbelievable. The braking ability of these cars is phenomenal. Um, it's completely outside what I'm used to, for sure. Now that you've had this test day under your belt, how does your expectations change for the 2020 season? Mate, um, 2020 season is all a bit of a challenge for us and just trying to finish as best we can. Um, we've got a bit of learning to do, both in the, in the garage and out on the track, so um, we'll be happy to finish every race and just position ourselves the best we can on the way. We get to take these cars to Mount Panorama at Bathurst uh, on the Easter weekend. That's a pretty cool thing, you'd agree? Oh, absolutely, mate. Can't wait. Love the, love the mountains out there two weeks ago and they had a ball, so this will be phenomenal around there, 100%. giving the fans what they want, and it's controlling the costs. You know, we're 12 cars out there today, and uh, yeah, look, you still get goose people when you see them roaring around, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a funny one because as a driver, you know, I'm there to win. I'm going off against my childhood heroes, so same as always, you know, I'm going there with the intention to do my best and to perform, perform well for the team. to be back in Australia, great to be back uh, into an S5000 car. I mean, my last time in, in Albert Park was uh, 2011, so a long, a long way back, but it's still, I think with the power that we have here, it's going to be good fun. It's really impressive, I'm really happy that it's a good power, got a good, good feeling with the car. Park. My first race in Formula One was here in 1999 and uh, I won in 2005. So I got great memories in this track. I like the circuit car, so I'm looking forward to drive this car in Albert Park.
Welcome to round nine of the Car Sales ARG Esports Cup. This week we're at Imola in uh, rural Italy. Very famous race circuit, very old school. Uh, so the run down to the first chicane. This chicane was put in to slow the cars down in recent years, so important to keep the flow up through this first chicane. Third gear, fifth up to fourth, and then fifth on the exit and then down to this next real flowing, real flowing fifth gear entry, fast on entry, back to fourth, change of direction. The car's quite lively in the rear, using plenty of the curbs. And then up to this third gear chicane, uh, hairpin, one of the slowest corners on the circuit. Important to get a good run out of here, because look at this exit, all uphill. So you need a good run out of that hairpin, up through the gears, fourth gear, fifth gear, blind crest. Reminds you of Bathurst, this part of the circuit. Then into a fourth gear fast sweeper. Important to keep the flow up. And then drop back down the other side of that hill into another fast entry tightening on an exit. So fifth gear on entry, back to third. Oh, too much curb. Good exit. Now up to this third gear chicane, real tricky chicane use a bit of curb on entry, curb on exit. You can see why that chicane's in there because then we come to this real fast downhill section. Real tricky braking here where the car's nervous in the rear and you've got to jump on the brake straight away. Downhill braking zone, car wants to swap ends on you. Two third gear corners, important to get a ex good exit on this second one flow the car out because now back onto the finish straight. Big long straight, lots of slip streaming along here. That's a lap around Imola. It's going to be plenty of action. 40 cars plus ready to head down to Abbey for the first time. A 25 minute race. Compulsory stop for fuel in this one. We get underway. Cars already fanning out in the background. They're still pouring around the final turn as the leading group heads to turn number one. They slip into single file for a moment. As everybody hustles for position, I'm not going to say too much until they get down into turn number three. In case you have any incidents, we do have one with several Whoa. cars off in the background here, Noobs. Lots of cars off in the background, Matt. There's four or five. Oh, oh more carnage here on the way down. Oh, boy. Jaden Ransley, second in the points. This will sting him. And there are cars going every which way here and there. Tander's involved in 75. That's Ben McMillan in the Michelin car that's ripped a few tyres and wheels off up the front. Cody Bircher leads. Now, Harley Haber, the series leader, was fighting for the lead in the first couple of corners, but there he is in the Kumo Tire number 21 car. He swapped back. He's dropped back to uh, P5, P6 here as he tries to put a move on Dylan O'Keefe to grab fifth spot back. That hurts him, but he is still in front of the man who was second coming into the night, Jaden Ransler, who was involved in that incident. He's back in P13, but it's Bircher with a break. Nathan Hearn has been Massive a flyer. Star. He's up to second from the tail of the top 10. Sutton, the pole man next. Andre Heimgartner, our star driver's in the mix. And then a gap back to Haber. Looking back to Heimgartner, and he's got some company. Harley Haber, series points leader, has caught the lead group. He's got onto the back of the Ned car, and he makes a dive down the inside. Points leader gets the spot, but Heimgartner fights it round the outside. He will hang on, and he will go for it. Remember, he's not fighting for the series. Haber is. He doesn't need to do anything silly here because Andre's here for the night. Look in front. It is willing between Sutton and Hearn, and these two are going to go on with it. Haber and Heimgartner push, push, push. Haber gets the spot. How this all plays out. Clemente here is fighting with Jordan Cox in 11th and 12th, and Cox is putting moves on here down the inside. We saw him get a move on Tim Brook. Now he's trying to pick up another spot here, and he's got that done. Nice move through to 11th place as they hook now on the run, under the bridge. And this is a, a braking area that can really get you sucked in. But it's a busy pit lane now as the chasers of Cody Bircher, all in a pack, dive into the lane. Sutton, Hearn, Heimgartner, Brown, John Martin is in as well. It's a case now of uh, top up the juice and go back out there and see what they can do. Tim Macro just up in front there. And he is also back in the pack after earlier dramas. And he's having some more there as well. And that Two was cars. Garth Tander with a, a wheel off there and a car spinning. Boy, boy, a bit of drama there just when we thought this had settled down. We take a look at the total replay of what happened coming through the very quick Stowe corner. 
Oh, and there was a tag there. Brooke got a little tag from Tanda after the macro spin. And Tim Brooke manages to get himself going again. Now it's on, on their way down into turn three and four, Noons. Yeah, Sutton got a really good run. Heard made a bit of a meal on the exit of Cops. And now the oh, Panafuel's cast oh. down and he's got contact. Hit from behind, up and over. Nasty shunt. Oh, boy. Uh, Delara, yep, you're there. We need some bits. We're struggling. The slowest, biggest crash I've ever yes. seen. It just exploded. <laughs> it literally did. And and Haber, he's had his fair share of incidents. Total replay here. It was a case of Hearn was slow there. He was really struggling to get it pulled up. Inside line, Sutton to the outside. And there's a little bit of a bobble here because Sutton is side by side. He's up over the curb. He holds the inside for the next line. Hearn switches back to try to get a run. He clips Sutton and then gets, well, absolutely sent by Haber. And, oh, boy, that's bad. Oh, here's, here's an emerging story, Matthew. Look at this. Dylan O'Keefe, car 33. Slow, slow, slow. I'm hearing juice problem. Not enough. He's in big trouble. And he started to slow coming down the old pit straight there. So we're riding car with him. He's losing positions as we speak, as the race is pretty much coming to an end now, is he going to make it to the finish line? He's on his way down the hangar straight now. That's Nathan Morecambe. I wonder if he's got the same problem as Dylan O'Keefe. I'm oh, hearing wow. he has. But this guy, Cody Birch at the Tony Lay Motor Group entry, car 36. But ah, uh, he wins. Well done. Race one steps in as a wild card. Ash Sutton fought off and got through that drama late in the race. He gets second. Andre Heimgartner sits in P3 as this fight. Look at this one. This is going all the way to the line. Luke King, John Martin run to the final turn to bring it on to the pit. Straight oh. contact. Martin goes around. King makes it across the line in seventh. And then, oh no. Martin gets wiped out on the way through. I think that might have been J uh, Jaden Ransley who, there, who was trying to fly his way through quite literally. Caruso off the front with those lucky boots in the Valvoline GRM car number seven. And Jet Johnson on the front row. We're underway for the final time here at Silverstone. On the run, down to Abbey the first time in this 15-minute timed race. Let's see how they make their way through. It's Michael Caruso leading the way. The Valvoline number seven, Brett Holdsworth, spins in front of the field. Will they miss the TPS group car? Carnage. Cars going left, right and centre. All sorts of drama. Tanders involved. Boy, nasty. Martin's involved. Cars going everywhere. Absolute car park carnage central. I was about to say there was a Danny Sullivan spin and win moment, but then he got caught up and had all bits and pieces torn off his number 99. So that spreads the field out. Jet Johnson in third position now through the first of the Luffields here. So it's all exploded like we saw in race number one, but I fear noon's a lot more carnage than what we saw in the first race fighting with Luke King in the triple two, but it's Caruso who's got a lead. He's managing to get away. It's through Maggots and into Beckett's, turns 12, 13, and 14. You look at the son of Stephen Johnson now. Oh, big run, huge run. Right run. Him with the hanger straight here, pulls to the outside. This will be massive if he can get this done on Luke King in that fast run triple two. He's on the outside here, but it's an aero load corner. Jet backs out of it because he knows that he's got to cover off Dylan O'Keefe, who is just behind. He's a bit wide up over the exit curb as they slow on here to approach club corner that brings them back onto the pit straight on this Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. 2.2 seconds, the margin for Michael Caruso. There's Aaron Seaton, Tim Brook, right with him as we watch for our title contenders fighting their way through the pack. James Golding miserable night tonight for the Valvoline 31 but he sits in ninth at the moment so he might be able to salvage something out of a night where race one was a disaster identical livery to his s5000 car which we'll see later this year he's on the back of harley haber eighth and ninth on the circuit right now luke king the quickest 153 2 but bircher was 153 4 on the first real flying lap with just over 10 minutes remaining in the second race here at Silverstone tonight, across that curve that we talked about during qualifying, and now Golding pulls out to make the move. Can he get it done going into Cop's turn? He can. He's narrow on the turn in though, so that gives Haver an opportunity to tuck in on the run towards Beckett's as they fly on through. And this is where it's a case of rhythm. You don't want to get the arrow, the arrow wash and drop off the tail. That's what's happened with Haver. Can't quite stick with the Valvoline number 31. Can't wait to see 
James Golding and the S5000 pack back on track. Hopefully we'll hear some announcements soon in terms of calendars and dates and what's happening with seeing the real big banging open wheelers back on the track. But for the moment, it's a virtual open wheeler race. Golding gets the spot and he pulls away. Let's have a look at the Total replay and get to the bottom of your question. Let's find the answer. He's in a fight here with another track tech cars. And it's car 22. That's Jack Milligan, the young Kiwi. It's all okay at the moment. Ah, he's out wide. Innocent. He's hit the sand. Wow. Tander is the innocent bystander. And they get together in... Um, well, that's Trans-Tasman relations for you. The staying car with Tim Brook, who's high above the pits at Sydney Motorsport Park tonight. His Garage 1 Morris Finance entry. Across the kerb down here at Stowe. Turn 15. Two turns remaining. It's a left and a right combination. Brook oh, plays no. to Caruso and gets him. He hits the back of the team Valvoline car. Did Bircher get the back of him as well? Bircher might have damage to his entry. It's pretty straightforward here what's unfolded, but it's a case of what happened afterward. Uh, afterwards, yeah, bang, there's the contact. Round goes Caruso. Wow. Oh, little contact. I think Birch is going to get away with that. And he, it was Bargwana, the big winner. Yeah, Bargwana's picked up second spot out of all of it. We're just under 40 seconds left to go, Matt, and we can reveal for you round nine next Thursday. We'll stay on board the Formula 3 Open Wheelers. We are heading to the former home of the San Marino Grand Prix, the Imola Circuit. It's Luke King. Well... He got the lead early in the race. It looks good here with one turn remaining. Checker flag is ready and waiting. So it's a double wild card win. Luke King picks up race two on board the triple two fast track comms car. Ben Bargwana, second place. Dylan O'Keefe, third. Cody Bircher will make it home for fourth from Aaron Seaton, who had a great second race. Good evening, everybody. Welcome along to round nine, the penultimate round of our car sales ARG eSport Cup. I'm Aaron Noonan. Cameron Vanderdung is back with me tonight, Cam, as we get ready for the penultimate round of the series, and we're going to mix it up. Just when everybody thought that they knew what was going to happen, we're going to have both cars tonight, the Audi Touring Car and the Dallara Formula 3 car, one race each around the famous Imola circuit, which, by the way, if you're playing along at home, is not in San Marino. Yes, it did host the San Marino Grand Prix, but it is in Italy. Let's see what we get tonight. I reckon it's going to be a tough one. Noons, I'm pumped about this one. We're getting to the business end of the season right now. That spicing it up of an Audi with the roof over the top, then into a Formula 3 European circuit and a real tightening up in that point score. It's set to be a big night's nice racing. And the news announced today is exciting. The last round at Mount Panorama next week will be an enduro. And importantly, it will be worth double points. So that means, as you said, the title fight is nowhere near done with yet. It's going to be really interesting. We mix it up tonight. Let's take a look at how they line up coming into tonight's round. Harley Haber, points leader. He's been a dominant driver so far in this series, Cam. He leads by 25 points over the young Kiwi, Jaden Ransley. Dylan O'Keefe, he's still in the mix. He's 45 off the lead as it sits at the moment. Ash Sutton next in fourth from Jordan Cox. You'd have to say that it's the top four that will fight for this title, but given the double points on offer in seven nights time. Probably the top seven or eight here are really still in the mix, depending on how things roll tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how things are, but our star driver is a young kid who's going places quickly. Yeah, Jack Doohan, the son of Ugan. His father did it on two wheels and Jack's making a name for himself in four. Uh, I like the fact that he's a Formula 3 driver, part of the big Auss Aussie contingent that'll be part of the FIA Formula 3 Championship this year. Looking forward to big things from Jack tonight. I know he's been spending plenty of time in a sim and certainly around Imola as well. He should be one to watch. He's been a runner-up in the Asian Formula 3 Championship in the last year or two. Let's take a look at the venue for tonight's race. Of course, the former home of the San Marino Grand Prix Round 9. It's 4.95 kilometres, 17 turns. It's been modified slightly since Formula 1 was there uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s. First race, 20 minutes, Audi touring cars, and then we swap it up, race two, 20 minutes on the clock again, Dallara Formula 3 cars. So tonight it's a case of getting your head around both types of cars. We've done this so far this year at the Phillip Island round a few rounds ago, 
and pretty much all the drivers who were good in one car were good in the other. Hey, tell you what, I mentioned it before, next week, you cannot miss this, final round of the ARG Esport Cup with car sales is at Bathurst. It's the track where we started the series, we will finish it there, Audi Touring Cars, two drivers, double points, our champion will be crowned, there is no better place to have a title decided. How many laps or simulation laps have been cut around Bathurst <laughs> over the last couple of months? It'll be exciting, that's everyone's go-to track isn't it, and what a way to finish this season off. Can't wait to see it, Mount Panorama awaits, but tonight it's about Imola, qualifying is underway as we get ready for round nine of the series, but before we join the action, here's a message from our friends at Car Sales. This is how I'd sell a car. Proper marketing. Oh, shit. Put effort into your photos. Value your car appropriately. Like 500 bucks? I don't know, take it. I hate it. It's got beautiful signalers. You can put CDs in there. The right pedal goes all the way down. And it's got, oh, it's a gear shift. And it's a stick shift. Sold. Wait, shouldn't this be in the car? Great to have you with us. Astron Tech qualifying underway at Imola. It is the penultimate round tonight. Round nine of the Car Sales AIG Esport Cup. 10 minutes on the clock. Harley Haber, we're zooming in on here. Our series points leader coming into tonight's round. And he is in a very good position, but he's got to do the job tonight with two different cars. The Audi Touring car first and the Formula 3 car later. There is our series leader. He's got the John Bow seating position there, Cam. Nice He's and close to the wheel. Also got the Womack and Womack headset going on there as well, back from the 70s and 80s. Great to see Harley Haber with the white headset on board. Looks like he's trying a chopper, not driving a sim, but he's a very good sim driver in that Kumo number 21 car. Points leader. He's won more races this year in this series than any other driver at the moment. He is second fastest, but the fast man is Tom Randall, car 49. Best lap time, 154 one four, but these times will come on down with nine minutes left on the clock in this Astron Tech qualifying. And speak of the devil, here is Tom Randall on board, the ACT fence hire car, just behind Harley Haber on the road. Tom Randall, he's a professional sim business owner these days. Great to see him on board. And check out the facial hair just starting to sprout there as well. Looking uh, resplendent is... Tom Randall as he makes his way around Imola this circuit. I'm looking forward to the racing around this circuit, Noons. It's a well-known European track. It's got some technical elements to it. It's relatively quick as well, and it should be a bit of fun. Yeah, this will be a really good one for both types of cars. It's long, it's fast, it's flowing, and yes, it does have a few chicanes added to the mix compared to how it did in the day, but that hasn't really changed the character too much. You see here this second chicane as Tom Randall uses all of the kerb and a little more he has been gazump though. Tim Brook goes to pole. 153.81 now in the Morris Finance number 64 car. Brook, Randall, O'Keefe, Chelsea Angelo. Ben Gomesall is behind the wheel tonight of car 35, taking over from his dad, Jason, of course, the Touring Car Masters driver. So we've got a thing here with uh, dad's called Jason and son's called Ben because we've got the Barguanas as well. It's Ben Barguana behind the wheel tonight in the Burson Auto Parts car as we look here at Thomas Randall. Look at the eyes, mega, mega serious. Of course, he's racing this year in the Dunlop Super 2 Series for Matthew White's team in the Nissan Altimas and will be with Nick Perkat for Brad Jones Racing later on in the year in the Supercars Enduro. Jaden Ransley goes to second, second in the points, second on the timesheets right now. He is still a red hot chance for this title chase. I just love the fact we're starting to talk about season 2020. Uh, I know we're starting to wrap up our eSports series. We've we've really been enjoying, but workshops are busy again, Noons. I know we're here at Melbourne Performance Centre ourselves, and you just get a buzz of excitement as cars are getting tinkered with. And Whoa. yeah, we just avoid that one. Good job there, Tom. Move on uh, with it. And just what a very much ice man there, wasn't he? Didn't even, that was, didn't even crack a sweat. Yeah, that was close. That was one of the... Uh, the HMO customer racing cars. I'm not sure if it was Will Brown or his teammate Nathan Morecambe. Haber to the pole, 153, 2 4. Nearly six tenths faster, Cameron, than Tim Brooks' time. So watch for this to keep coming down. Seven minutes to go in Astron Tech qualifying. If you've just joined us, our first race tonight will be in the Audi Touring Cars. We're in a 15-minute qualifying session. It'll be a 20-minute race, and then we'll have another qualifying session for Formula 3. Uh, this is round nine of the series. Last week, it was round eight of the title chase. 
and we headed to Silverstone with Formula 3 cars. And it was a, a great weekend, a great night, I should say. I keep saying weekend. I'm so in the motor racing vernacular of um, the past. But uh, a great race that we saw last week. Tighten the title chase up. Had a couple of different drivers running at the front. Jordan Mazzaroli here on board, the number 61 car. He's jumped to fourth fastest. He's one of three wild cards tonight, but he's not a newcomer here. He's had a run in the series before this season. Not too surprised at the young guns who come in as wild cards, finishing top three in last night's wild card race, make their mark in the main series tonight. Well, it's all about seat time, isn't it? Whether you're in an actual in real life race car or also in the sim, when you talk to a lot of these drivers, the translation, the technical capabilities, the characteristics of them, nothing substitutes time in the sim. So a lot of the young guys have a lot more time up their sleeve. It's a bit harder when you're a parent or you've got an everyday job you've got to do during the week as well to find the, the quality time to, to get the miles in. But no shock that some of these young guys come in a quick straight away. Stephen Johnson's behind the wheel of the number 17 Audi, but for the second qualifying and race in F3, he will swap seats. Jet Johnson, his son, will take over the sim at the moment there is Stephen Johnson the V8 veteran and of course champion of Touring Car Masters aboard the mighty Mustang Sally he'll be champing at the bit to get back behind the wheel of that brand new XD Falcon that rolled out at Adelaide in Touring Car Masters when that resumes very soon you can see here up and over the chicane and finding some time in the 17 car. He's 23rd on the timing screen at the moment. In fact, I see his name. Actually, no, I see his name there, but I don't think that's him. That's the wrong number car on our timing screen. Although, yeah, there's a bit of confusion. He's 17, but we're seeing 28 on um, our in car here. So nevertheless, he's not uh, at the front at the moment and he's going to get hauled out of the sim halfway through the evening and we'll stick young Jet behind the wheel who did a nice job last week in the F3 round at Silverstone as Will Brown now jumps up to P3. That's the first time we've seen him in the top three all series. Well, he's still got four and a half minutes to go and I think some quicker times will start to be fired in there, but it is good signs from our uh, inaugural winner of TCR Australia then Will Brown. And uh, he's, he's been working away at it in the sim, hasn't he? He's been really enjoying it. I'm not surprised to see him come into the mix because we saw him just before on screen what, a minute or so ago, had it drifting nicely, had it turned in in the back end coming on through. He looked fast. Let's see if he can find some more time. He's three tenths away from Harley Haber's pole position time at the moment. That's a 153.15. Uh, Cody Bircher, P2 at the moment. Remember, he is another wild card, but he has been a winner in this series in previous weeks. Will Brown, Jaden Ransley, Nathan Hearn in fifth. Remember, he is, well, he's been in the title chase just about the whole time, but had a shocker in recent times. He's back to sixth in the points as we see. Dylan O'Keefe, he sits in third, and he's probably the first driver just about to publicly confirm he's got himself a co-driver for next week's Bathurst finale, which will be a two-driver double points final round as Ash Sutton now jumps to position number two. And O'Keefe here will keep an eye on him and where he is. He's 12th at the moment. Just over three minutes to go in Astron Tech qualifying. And no improvement from the GRM Renault Sport Drive. In fact, he does to 10th. Not much, but it is a little bit of an improvement as he works that chicane at the Tamburello corner. Of course, one of the most... Well, sadly, famous but infamous corners in world motorsport. You can't really mention Imola without that fateful weekend in 1994. But it's a circuit with such amazing history, with so many of the great drivers over the years in Formula One, World Superbikes, MotoGP, touring car racing, GT racing. Speaking of GT, ta-da, here he is, Garth Tander, at the wheel of the number 75, JMEC Racing Audi. He is racing tonight, as always, at Melbourne Performance Centre. And there he is on the SimWorks Sim. And watch it move as he... Turns this car in, he rides the curbs, he brakes, he accelerates. It replicates all the feelings that he gets from the real race car. And of course, looking forward to hopefully seeing GT behind the wheel of one of these cars for real again at some stage over the course of this calendar year as he works his way through that second chicane up and over the curb. Uh, timing wise at the moment, not in the game at the moment, but we haven't seen a flying lap from him yet. He's got two minutes to go. So really he's got this lap and one more. And a little bit of a difference for qualifying tonight, Cam. When the time runs out, you can finish your lap. On previous rounds for the series, once time ran out, that was it. 
Not like uh, Formula One, what, circa 2017 or was it 2016 with their qualifying one where they did that two events where clock runs out, you don't get to finish your lap. But we've got a minute 30 to go and James Golding's actually fired it up into the top four now, pushing Will Brown back into fifth place. So just running through that order again, Harley Haber has not been headed. He's quick yet again. He holds on to the championship lead at the moment and is doing it nice and early in qualifying for round nine. Ash Sutton in second. Cody Bircher, James Golding and Will Brown, your top five with one minute remaining in qualifying. James Golding, Valvoline GRM, fourth spot, two tenths of a second away from the pole position at the moment. Been busy in his sim racing, had a run in the supercar series last night. He's back behind the wheel of the team Valvoline GRM car. He'll be in the S5000 program for GRM when that gets underway. A bit later in the year, P4 at the moment, it's Haber, Sutton and Bircher who sit one, two, three. Improvement from Ben McMallon, the Michelin car. Car 39 jumps up to position 14. 40 seconds left on the clock and counting. Uh, Jack Dewan, our star driver tonight in that Red Bull Junior Team car, currently sits in position 25. A lot of work to do there from Jack Dewan particularly qualifying being such a critical part. And I know we said to mention how fast this circuit is. It's not going to be an easy one for them to pass in uh, in the various categories. So you do want to make sure you get yourself up um, to the front part of this pack, particularly at the end of qualifying, just to stay out of any of the trouble that is um, part and parcel of sim racing for anywhere in the mid to the back end of the field. You really want to get yourself up the order. Four seconds remaining in qualifying and the checker flag will fly remembering that they can continue on this lap so harley haber ash Sutton, cody birch james golding your top four we look at ben mcmillan on a bit of a lap here at the moment chelsea angelo has been pushed all the way back down to 12. she was running as high as the top five earlier and i'm not seeing any other movement that looks significant in the order noons Caruso here, the Valvoline GRM number seven car. Has been getting a little faster every time he gets behind the wheel of the SimWorks Sim. He's in the same room as Garth Tander, just a few doors down from us as he continues to find his way in Sim racing. He had a good run last week at Silverstone in the F3 car. Had some drama, but was able to take advantage of the reverse grid. Got contact, though, late in the second race that spun him out of what would have been comfortably a top three or four position as we keep an eye on that number seven machine those familiar valvoline colors and branding that is so synonymous with gary rogers motorsport check it flag is out so it's a case now for caruso to finish off this lap i spoke to him a bit earlier tonight he wasn't brimming and oozing with confidence was caruso not to the level that he was last week he's definitely got his work cut out for him tonight in that number seven car qualifying astron tech qualifying is about to end. The final cars are finishing their flying laps of the Imola Grand Prix circuit. But it's Harley Haver and Ash Sutton who are one and two on the grid. Not much in it. Five hundredths of a second, Cameron. And Cody Bircher is in the mix again. The young wild card, Golding. Will Brown, though, P5, is the highest he has been all series. From there, he could really make an impact tonight. Tim Macro finishing off his lap. Let's have a chat to our Astron Tech Pole position driver, Harley Haver, series points leader. Hey, we can actually see you tonight on your <laughs> yeah, camera screen. Are hey, you, you've got that John Bow uh, driving seating position down pat. You are mega close to the wheel, but it's working for you. Yeah, mate. Uh, a little bit of hard work. It's gone into getting this rig pretty much um, ideal to where we sit in the supercar. So it's all based off, off uh, obviously, that. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously, quick and TCR as well. How many hours of testing at Imola have you done this week, be honest? <laughs> uh, two hours. Two. Two what? to two. Yeah, two? one hour for each car. Like, I had I had two cars. So, yeah, two hours this, this week. All right. I had a lot of stuff to do. That's all. All right. Busy yeah. man. Busy man. Busy I get man. it. I get it. That's cool. Hey, good to chat. Good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. Well, it's, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. There is Harley Haber on pole for the first of our two races tonight. And let's have a chat to James Golding, P4 uh, for the Valvoline driver. Nice job, mate. You're uh, you're racking up the sim miles this week. Yeah, um, obviously I had the supercars stuff on last night, so that was good fun. But good to jump back in the TCR machine. Haven't done any laps around this track until today, so really enjoying it. It's an awesome track. Um, obviously got off to a good start, so we'll... Hopefully, we're just ahead of the carnage and we can uh, follow on for those guys at the front there. They've still got a little bit of pace on us, but we'll try and hang on and see how we go. 
do you get the feeling that this is a track that you could actually launch a few passing moves on? Yeah, I think there's a there's a couple of zones where you can definitely throw it in there under brakes. Um, so I think the racing will come out pretty good, but there'll be there'll be a few moves getting thrown. It'll just be um, picking the right moment and uh, staying in the toe, I reckon, especially those front guys are pretty quick. So we'll have to stay in the toe to try and beat them. Sounds like a plan. Hey, you must be pretty excited too. Calendar confirmed for S5000 uh, coming up later in the year. Good stuff, huh? You can you can really pencil in some dates now. Oh, yeah. Really, really looking forward to that. It's great news. Obviously, moving forward, the sim stuff's been good fun, but, yeah, just really want to get back in the real thing. So, can't wait to jump in. You're not the only one. Good to chat to you. All the best in race one tonight, mate. Thank you. Cheers. There he is, James Golding on board. The number 31, Valvoline Machine. You know what i mean cameron yeah it was great to hear from both the guys you can you get a sense though that uh, harley haber may uh, not have been uh, fully covering off two hours in the sim one hour per car i think there might have been a couple more cheeky hours he might not be counting them you know the old one for you one for me yeah i reckon uh, some of these guys don't want to admit just how many k's they've been doing in these sims let's have a look at the way that they have qualified in astron tech qualifying harley haber Ash Sutton, front row. I reckon I've said that a few times over the course of this series. Cody Bircher next from James Golding, then Will Brown and Jaden Ransley, Nathan Hearn and Jordan Mazzaroli, Tim Brook and Tom Randall. That is the top 10 as we get set for this first of two races. It is round nine of the Car Sales ARG Esport Cup. First of two races, Audi Touring Car for this one, Delara Formula 3 car for the second one. Critical time in the series. Second last round. Double points next week at Bathurst. you got to get it done in this one. You get to re-qualify in F3. Doesn't matter now. Harley Haver off and running. This long run towards the Tamburello chicane. Let's see if all 40-plus cars make it on through as Haver tucks to the inside. Ash Sutton looks to the outside as they sweep through turn one. Haber holds it into a wonderful little position. There is more a box out there so that Sutton wasn't able to move around the outside. So Haber's still well and truly under control. Out wide, though. He has run wide on the exit. And that gives, is that James Golding now? A bit of a run on them as well. Birch is in the mix. Sutton getting down the inside on the run to the next corner as we pick it on up. And Haber gets back to the front. Sutton goes around the outside now to try to earn that spot back. The blue car to the inside is Cody Bircher, and Sutton is out wide. He loses ground on that run up the hill. Haver in front, leading the way in the Kumo 21. Back in the pack, it is really, really willing as they push for early space. Nathan Hearn with Will Brown side by side as we're halfway around this first lap. It is a 20-minute timed race, and it's a case now. Will Brown and Hearn get together. And the HMO customer racing car is off the road. And that great start has all come undone for car number one. Yeah, Will Brown was looking to put a move on there, but he is well and truly to the back of the pack right now. Harley Haber still controlling, though, out in front. And Will Brown is going to be a very long race oh. back from here. So I reckon that's Jay Hansen, who's just been dispatched out of the pack in the middle. Oh, there's cars everywhere. Hearn off the road. The Gulf Western Oil car there to the left of screen. We can go back to the front. It's Haber, Bircher and Golding. Top three have managed to break away from the rest of the pack. There was a bit of chaos there going on. It looks like Jaden Ransley sitting in fourth from Ash Sutton and Tim Brook. End of lap one. There's no chicane in the current version of Imola coming onto the pit straight. And look at Haber. He's trying to get away from them. He hugs the inside up against the pit wall. And it's Golding now who goes for the inside on Cody Bircher. The run to... The first turn, the Tamburello, remember that used to be flat out. It was turned into the series of chicanes after that weekend in 94 from 1995 onwards. But it gives you another chance to make another passing move and set up a run down this next straight. Yeah, because of the battle that was going on there between Golding and Bircher, though, Golding just pinched up on the apex, allowing Haber to flow the car through that initial chicane. And he's just been able to gap them slightly. So the battle now for second, Golding and Bircher. Ransley and Sutton behind them, and Brooke and Sarah are battling over the seventh place. As we look at Haber heading up the hill. Golding said he just wanted to tack onto the guys in front. He felt he just didn't have the pace to go with Harley Haber, but he's doing a wonderful job to stay with him right now. I reckon Ransley's going to come up in the mix here, but it's a question, can they hang on to Harley Haber, who has made a Haber habit of just sneaking away in this series, inch by inch, driving off down the road, looking back here at Dylan O'Keefe, who is 
keeping the pressure on Jordan Cox in car number six, fighting for eighth and ninth. A couple of the car sales TCR Australia series drivers who, in their regular line of work in TCR, drive an Alfa Romeo and a Renault. Of course, it's the Audi touring car that we are behind the wheel of in this series. And we've raced it in plenty of rounds so far this year. The racing has been really, really good, but we've thrown a another spanner in the works tonight because we're making the drivers change cars between races. We did this at Phillip Island a couple of rounds ago and I reckon it really is a good mix. It tended to not mix up the order too much. The gun drivers are the gun drivers, but it just changes it around as we see Dylan O'Keefe there. Sim setup is looking the part and he's desperately trying to claw his way back up here and get into the leading group. 20 minute race, 16 minutes to go. And Haber leads the way by half a second from James Golding, Bircher, Ransley, Sutton, Brooke, then Jordan Cox, Dylan O'Keefe, Aaron Seaton making a nice start. He sits in ninth and Michael Clemente in position 10 in the Worth number 15 car. Of course, he's another of the TCR Australia drivers. As O'Keefe now makes a run on the exit. Cox knows it sits mid-track, but that won't be enough to stop O'Keefe from having a look. This is where this track's good. You can get switchbacks on exit of chicanes and there's a long run to the next corner. But of course, Cox is awake up to that. He'll park it right at the inside of the turn. That's exactly what happened. But look at this. O'Keefe has just been waiting for the right moment. It's been combination of corner after combination of corner. He's got the run now. Looks to the inside of Jordan Cox. Jordan Cox is all elbows though, pushing oh. him right into the circuit as Dylan O'Keefe looks to the outside. Look how squirmy Cox is under brakes. And O'Keefe got it done. He set him up from a long way back there. Did Dylan O'Keefe in a great move. And he should be clear now. I think Jordan Cox has used up a lot of tyre to try and keep Dylan O'Keefe at bay. And O'Keefe just released it on the exit and probably ran a bit wider than he expected. And O'Keefe's got himself a slowdown penalty here. So he's just got to, if you're not familiar with sim racing, if you've overstepped the track limits or done something along those lines you'll get a, a one or a two second where you've got to lift off basically and give away a bit of time so it doesn't take you out of the race it's not a penalty to the pit lane it's something that you can recover from but it's something that you you have to serve because if you don't get on with it and take your foot off the throttle pedal uh, it's going to come and bite you as we jump on board here with Aaron Seaton that's a car off the road was that James Golding Valvoline number 31 it looked a lot like the GRM Valvoline machine that'll move Aaron Seaton up a spot Haber continues to lead the way. A bit hard to pick up who it was. In fact, we're hearing it was Stephen Johnson. So I'm not quite sure how it came to be. He's clearly been involved in a drama on that first lap. Blue car looks very similar from a distance to the James Golding Valvoline machine. So uh, sorry to the GRM fans. That was Clemente in the background in the Worth car firing off the road at the Tamburello entrance. Uh, but sorry to the Valvoline GRM fans who for a second there thought that Golding was out of the mix. He's very much in the mix. He sits in. Position two, uh, 13 and a half minutes on the clock left to go in this race. Haber leads by six tenths of a second as we pick up Clemente, just trying to pick himself back up and get going as Aaron Cameron puts a move in the Valvoline number 18 car to grab position number 12. Golding's done a great job here to stay within six tenths of Haber. As we look at Jack Doohan, I think a bit further back down the order there. So the leaders are in among some lap traffic here and Jack Dewan steps out of the way in that Red Bull Junior Team car. Oh, Golding here, he's right up behind. Jay Hansen, there's traffic here, there and everywhere, and that opens the door for Cody Bircher to try to get a run for second place on the run down the hill to the next chicane, the Variante Alta. And let's have a chat to Stephen Johnson. Hey, mate, we just saw you off the road. You're back in the pack. What's going on? Well, I don't know what happened, actually, Nunes, at the start. I had a pretty good start and uh, got caught up in just a little bump, but then... My car just started wigging out. It was like it blew an engine or something. So I had to go into the pits and spent uh, a couple of minutes in there. There's some cars on the track sideways everywhere, isn't there? I was going to say, did uh, did you do a bit of uh, mechanical work on this sim car before you went out there? Was that the problem? <laughs> uh, maybe I might have. Maybe I should have let Jet to, uh, to his devices. Well, he's going to step in for the second race in the F3 car. So how did you decide who was going to drive what? Was it rock, paper, scissors? or? Well, I don't know how it's going to go with trying to do a quick driver swap, but we'll we'll see how we go. I've got, like, this crew chief thing, too, that's in my ear, and it's really hard to hear you, so I'm just going to stop that and try not to go off track. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Well, you've got to get used to the driver changes because next week it's a 
two driver Bathurst Enduro. I know you've driven with your old man at the mountain before, but it's the first time with the young bloke. Yeah, it's going to be very cool, actually. Uh, I only told him this afternoon when he got home from school, so uh, he's very pumped about that. Uh, loves Bathurst, obviously, and he's really keen to get there. And, uh, you know, two hour race is going to be a decent run for both of us in the sim, so it's going to be quite cool. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I might have to Vaseline the sim up so I can slide out quickly so we can <laughs> jump in. I don't know. Because it's like I'm like a sardine in a tin can in here. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it's we, really we not built for, uh, for me. <laughs> We're watching Stevie J, and it looks like you put a little drink holder in there as well, just over yes. your shelf. Oh, I, have. I've got, I don't know if I can, I don't know where it is. It's here somewhere. <laughs> oh, now I'm off the road. <laughs> oh, my job here's done, Noons. Yeah, I think we'll get out of it here. And nice helmet collection in the background there. I expect to see them on eBay next week. Oh, thank you, mate. No dramas. I'll get the sleuth onto it. Ah, good man. See you soon. Cheers, boys. There is Stephen Johnson. He's down the back of the pack, but hasn't lost his enthusiasm for things as it sits in that number 17. Cam. In that moment, looking for his drink. I mean, that's uh, Gary Johnson, isn't it? Total replay here, Cam, and let's have a look at... Well, he's going to star here just quietly. Is this the moment where he reached for the drink straw? Uh, no, it's not. We're, uh, we're not going to get that replay that we were looking for here, unfortunately. But uh, Harley Haber is the man who leads the way. It feels like a replay of a few other races this year because he leads by 3.7 seconds now. He's built that margin over James Golding. As we have a look here, just outside the top 10, Michael Clemente in the Worth 15 car, Aaron Cameron behind in the Valvoline car, and Declan Fraser, who stepped into the TCR cars at Albert Park in the ex-Jason Bright Volkswagen Golf. 10 minutes to go on the clock in this first race of two tonight. And Cameron showing the nose down to turn one, gets it done. Doors left open and slides on through third place in last year's car sale TCR Australia Series. Young Aaron Cameron moving to GRM this year to drive a Peugeot. And exciting that that series will roar back into life at Sydney Motorsport Park in August. And of course been announced by the Australian Racing Group in uh, the course of recent times that we'll get rolling again with events at Sandown in September at Phillip Island at some stage in October and the Bathurst International in November not to mention trip to Tasmania in January back-to-back -back weekend Simmons Plains and Baskerville as we ride on board here and have a look at Chelsea Angelo in the Astron Tech number two car she's been going really nicely in the last few rounds we might have a chat to her now let's not put her off her game but Chelsea have you got enough fuel in this race we've had a problem with this in previous weeks I know noons we have, but no, we should be good. I mean, I've got someone that's spotting me tonight and it's a fixed setup, so I should be able to cross in line with pace. <laughs> One of the things we've heard drivers in the sim racing this year talk about having a spotter. How do they do this for you? Are they programmed into watching your feed? Where do they do it from? Just tell our viewers a little bit how that works. Yeah, so basically a spotter will jump onto the same server um, as we're racing on, um, and then they'll watch us from an outside bird's view of what's happening, um, any spin outs or anything like that around us. Um, and then once we're on the grid, they'll sort of help us unmark tires that we don't need if we do a pit stop or how many liters of fuel that we actually need in the car. Uh, but he's just sort of like counting down the laps for me, how much time we've got left. So it's really good help with something like that because all I'm focusing on is trying to catch the guys in front. <laughs> Do you pay big bucks to your spotter? Is, is that the way it works? Uh, not for me. I'm actually a nice one. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, no, no charge for him tonight. So, um, But no, he's, um, he's my engineer for the Excel Cup Series as well. So he's helping me out with tonight. Uh, cool. You're running P12. You're having a good run here. Aaron Cameron is next on your, your hit list, or Aaron Seaton's not far ahead. So you're just outside the top 10. You've come on strong in the last couple of rounds. This is good. Yeah, I think it's the fact that like I've been doing so many other um, iRacing events with this particular car, so I think I'm accustomed to it, so I know it pretty well now. All right, we'll get out of your ear. All the best. Thanks, Noons. Great to chat to Chelsea Angelo in the Astron Tech car. And Cameron, we've got a good fight here. Dylan O'Keefe is in a rumble with Cody Bircher, who is using all the road, bit of kerb, a little bit of grass potentially coming up here as well. This is a... Pretty decent fight. The battle pack is for 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. Aaron Seaton in that, do we call it bright yellow car? It's lime green. It depends on what your eyesight's like. Uh, he's at the tail of the queue here. And this is bubbling with seven minutes to go. 
Yeah, Birch has dropped right back, hasn't he, from earlier on in this race and really under pressure and, and running wide there is not going to help him. So Dylan O'Keefe got a run and he's through now and Birch just slots in behind him. That puts Maseroli behind him and you're right. There's the potential they could all trip over each other here as they squirm and look for position and Dylan O'Keefe will be able to break the back of him now. But it looks like Maseroli now through. Whoop, on contact. Birch. Martin got into the back end of Cody Birchercam and sent the young gun off the road. There he is, just getting going again in that number 36 Tony Lay motor group car. Six and a half minutes on the clock. Uh, Harley Haber update leads by 4.9 seconds now over James Golding. Here is Jaden Ransley, the fight for fourth and third. Ash Sutton is just in front. Now, Ransley's, he, he shouldn't lose faith here. Even though Haber, the points leader, is in front and going to build a margin if they finish where they are, always in the back of his brain must be next week. Double points at Bathurst in a two-driver enduro. He could leave this round in the lead and nearly be there on a regular week, but with double points next week, it is way open still. And Harley Haber could be exposed for someone coming along and potentially, nope, sweeping the leg, taking him out. <laughs> Never know, Cobra Kai Dojo uh, could be getting involved here. Could just be the last moment there at Go the Crane. You never know. Hey, Ash Sutton here has been a contender all year. He's still in the mix here with Golding to keep some pressure on the Valvoline number 31 car. And this has been a, a series where Ash Sutton has, has had some really good runs. He's won some races, but he's been really unlucky and been taken out of a couple of second races over the course of you know, the previous rounds. We are racing on the Imola Grand Prix circuit tonight. We are uh, staying with this track for the second race tonight, but we'll change the cars to Dallara Formula 3 cars. Ash Sutton at the wheel, the 116 Panther Fuel Audi Tourer, of course, the former British touring car champion in among a list of so many famous drivers who've won that championship over the years, whether it be in the, the modern era or the super touring era or Group A. Here's Tony Delberto in the number 50 car. He is back with us this week uh, after a little week off. Uh, Tony's with us. Are you recovered? Are you feeling better? Are you up and about tonight? Hardly. Uh, having a bit of a shocker here, mate. Uh, turn around at the first corner and uh, it's sitting in the pits for about five minutes getting repaired. So, so hence, your enthusiasm fun. levels are in the toilet right about now. Oh, mate. It's just so <laughs> frustrating, you know? Like, we're told to... Take it easy in the turn, first turn, and then you get just Liberace down the backside. So, uh, yeah, my race is done here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just P38 at the moment, although <laughs> Stephen Johnson is in the same boat, and he's 37, uh, so you got uh, someone to go and chase. This uh, this uh, online racing is so rough. I struggle. I struggle to uh, have a smile on my face, but... And try and take it not so seriously because we all want to try and do really well. We put the hours in and then you get taken out of the start. It's like, oh, anyway, whatever. I feel like I'm about to have one of our, our little interventions in pit lane with you here, Tony <laughs> Delberto. This is about the time I bring a camera and a microphone and put it in your face just to try and get some more emotion out of you. No, no, I've got plenty of emotion on. That's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, it comes uh, with the Italian uh, heritage, doesn't it? But you know what? It does. And I've really enjoyed learning this circuit. And uh, I was really looking forward to having a crack. And I've just gone off the track. <laughs> <laughs> just two from two for me tonight, Nate. I'm just wrong. All right, we'll get out of it. You've done your own commentary, <laughs> Kirst. Best of luck in uh, race two. Hopefully it gets a bit better. I hope so, mate. Cheers. Thanks, boys. We pick up on a fight here with Garth Tander and Will Brown fighting in the World Championship you, for 21st position. Do you remember the, the cartoon Winnie the Pooh back in the day? Yeah, you know yeah. There was a character called Eeyore. Do you remember Eeyore, the yeah. really sad donkey? Where are you? He was the really sad donkey. He's the really yeah. sad donkey tonight. Yeah, he's Eeyore tonight. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely a sad man. He was not very happy. Here's Garth Tander in the JM8 Racing 75 car. The Sim Works Sim is... Oh boy, I'm feeling giddy just watching him. I went and stood in the room behind him while he was practicing earlier in the night and it's really interesting to watch this thing at work and to watch one of the best saloon car racers in the world do his thing. Of course, the 2007 V8 Supercar Champion, three-time winner of the Bathurst, Bathurst 1000 and of course, don't forget, also a Bathurst 24-hour winner in the mighty Monaro back in 2002. At the moment, he sits in P21. Will Brown is behind him. We are riding on board with Garth looking back at Will and they had some good scraps last year in 
the Car Sales TCR Australia Series. Here's that fight for second. Sutton is on Golding. Two minutes on the clock. This is the fight of the race at the moment. So this is the battle for second spot. They run wide. The cars are just getting a bit loose towards the back end of the race. Golding's going to do what he can to keep Sutton at bay. Sutton has a good look at the strengths and weaknesses of the car in front of him. And he'll be setting him up for a run. One minute 43 remaining in this race. This is the battle for the minor steps on the podium. Sutton steps out, has a look at Golding. Golding's going to make his Audi Touring car exceptionally wide. Runs wide on the exit, though. Does this give Sutton a chance? Sutton has a look. Takes the opportunity up the inside. Uh, slow down penalty for Golding. He had to relinquish that one and slow because he's been taking too much curb. So the, the game, the iRacing platform, uh, administers those sorts of penalties. So you can't go and cut the track as much or use the curbs as much and get away with it. And that's why he was slowed there and had to back out of it. He's got one lap to go because we are now on the last lap in race one round nine of the car sales ARG eSport Cup at Imola. You can see the long run there from the grandstand past the new pit facility that was put in in the mid-2000s as they run towards Tamburello. But it's Harley Haver who leads 5.9 seconds down the road and on target for yet another win in this series. Must admit, I almost wish we could go back to like at the Gold Coast when we turned Hawkeye off and just let them have a go at all the curbs. Can we just do that for the last lap? 30 seconds remaining. We are on the last lap of this one. And Sutton has now well and truly taken control of second place as a result of that penalty for Golding. A reminder, Cam, final round next week is coming to you from Bathurst. It is an enduro, two drivers per car. Some highly interesting names being touted as co-drivers for our regulars in this ARG series. Can't wait to see the announcements during the week as to who has been brought in to have a run. So we'll expand the field from 43 drivers to 86 drivers to tackle the mountain. But right now, it is all about this man, this track, this event. Harley Haber leads the way. On his way towards the chequered flag at Imola, up and over the curbs at the very ante alta chicane and bringing it on home towards the run to Ravazza on one of these circuits that so many people will have watched so much racing over the years as he drops on down. This is a handy margin. Six seconds at the moment and he's going to bring this one home. Comfortable enough just to adjust himself in his seat. <laughs> Make his way through the final corner. He's listening to us. We're yeah, good. You're yeah. better though. Ah, fantastic. There it is. Happy, Job done. Happy. Job done. Might have to go P1 in that one. Four well, points on both races, but so it's um it's important to get a good result in the next one. Early on they came here though, didn't they, Harley? We saw a couple of uh, a couple of moments where they looked around. James Golding was able to hang with you for quite some time. Yep. But eventually you broke the back of him. Yeah, the toe's quite powerful around here. So uh, there's a few decent straights where you can get a little bit of a gain. And uh, obviously yeah, down the main straight as well is a big one. So even I can pull around the corners within that two seconds, you get a toe. So it just brought the boys closer and closer. But it was good to break that gap at the end. And after that, pretty much, yeah, we're just driving it away to a six second lead, I think, at the end. Just another six second lead. Just so casual for this dude. Well, it's interesting actually to watch the watch the way you drive these cars around on, on a sim. Obviously, they're very different to driving a, a a real life race car, but you seem to be able to get a natural flow with this car around this circuit as well. Watch a couple of them pinch on entry on a couple of apexes, but you just seem to be able to release the car. Is that just a bit of time getting used to them and just spending a lot of time in a sim? Yeah, look, I think now getting this late in the season, we've done oh, a lot of laps in a TCR car at a lot of different circuits, so it's given us a uh, uh, kind of a good baseline for, for every track that we go to and um, yeah just picking it up now really quick so it's good to go to each track and, and be on the pace and obviously fighting for a championship it's you know all about points at this end of the season and um, yeah so far so good and Harley you're well and truly in control but double points coming up next round so I guess you've got to get as many points as you can right now thank you for your time mate and uh, we'll get set noons for uh, some more racing coming up shortly Race two not far away. Let's have a quick chat to our third place driver, James Golding, who was, mate, you were in the mix there at the start, then you, you faded back a little bit. What happened there? Yeah, um, uh, my pace, pace probably wasn't quite as good as the guys at the front there. There was a bit of a um, 
moment there with Cody. He went wide and I sort of half followed him a bit. And then I was trying to catch my thing coming back on and um, Ash sort of got stuffed over a bit. But he caught back up in the end. And then right at the last minute there where he got me, I just had an off track. So I had to um, just slow up a bit. But I'm um, still happy with that. P3 from fours, still good. And uh, Valvoline Machine did its job. You know what I mean. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, mate. Race two, not far away. We'll let you get back in the gear for qualifying. Yeah, cheers, mate. There he is, James Golding, behind the wheel of the number 31 Valvoline Machine. And we'll see him this year behind the wheel of the S5000 Big Banger Open Wheeler as we recap how they finish. Haber, Sutton, Golding, Ransley and Brooke, the top five. Jordan Cox, Dylan O'Keefe, Jordan Mazzaroli, John Martin and Aaron Seaton was the way they finished in the top ten. The Aarons were 10 and 11. Aaron Seaton, 10th. Aaron Cameron in position 11. The second race is not too far away. We will be having another qualifying session before that. Cody Bircher is next from Fraser, Mediki, Rowan Shepherd from New Zealand. Michael Clemente spent a bit of time off the road. Tanda Brown, Hearn and Andrew Waite, another of the Kiwis in the Track Tech racing car, rounded out the top 20. So the first of our two races is done this evening. Can't wait for race two. We've got another qualifying session with the drivers now all moving into the Formula 3 Dallara. But some great news during the week from the Australian Racing Group in a double header in Tasmania in January 2021. Simmons Plains will host one event on one weekend. And then, of course, it's Baskerville, a circuit that hasn't hosted national championship racing for quite some years. Now, in previous years, an Audi TCR car has been down there. And here's a taste of what to expect next year. Hello there, I'm Jean-Michel Courtois, director of the Total Engine Oil Research Center. And you're here to discover our secrets, aren't you? Well, follow me. Let me show you what we do here. Lady, gentlemen, ready? Let's push Total Quartz engine oil to its limits under the extreme conditions of motorsports.
Good job, team. The track is our lab. Total Quartz. This is how I'd sell a car. Proper marketing. Oh, shh. Put effort into your photos. Value your car appropriately. Like 500 bucks, I don't know, take it. I hate it. It's got beautiful signalers. You can put CDs in there. The right pedal goes all the way down. And it's got, oh, it's a gear shift. And it's a stick shift. Sold. Wait, shouldn't this be in the car? Great to have you with us, round nine of the car sales ARG eSport Cup. We're getting ready for the second race. We've put the drivers out of the Audi Touring car and into the Dallara Formula 3 car, and they've got another opportunity here to go fast, get some points, win some, well, virtual trophies anyway. Better best kind. Yeah, exactly. Nathan Hearn, we just saw him unveil that Gulf Western Oil Trans Am car, and Trans Am has been... Uh, a great addition to the National Motor Racing Platform this year with ARG and having a run at the Adelaide 500 earlier in the year. He's on the line with us now. Nathan Hearn behind the wheel of the 29 Gulf Western Oils car. Hey, uh, Nathan, that Trans Am car looks tasty. Yeah, it's, it's come up bloody awesome. Um, completely opposite to where our last car was. The last car was more the uh, American tough uh, NASCAR looking car. Um, and this year we're going for a much more professional and sleek look. And, Honestly, it's, it's hard to choose between, between two cars, but um, FX Science has done a beautiful job in the car and it's, it's turned out awesome. Have you run over a virtual black cat under a ladder in the last few weeks? The wheels have just about fallen off your series campaign. You've had all sorts of stuff go wrong for you. Uh, yeah, it's, um, hopefully I can get all the bad luck out of the way in this thing and when we come back to real life and have some good races on the string. Um, but yeah, look, today was, that was my fault with um, Sutton. Um, he bumped me, gave me a slow down through a chicane and I pulled over to the left to um, let everyone pass. I was looking in my mirror and I uh, got collected on the front end. So, uh, um, yeah, and last round, obviously, we all know what happened when I got sent flying 20 foot in the air, done some aerobatics. But, yes. um, yeah, look, it's, it's just, yeah, it's how it goes. So we just have a bit of fun today. At least the pressure's off for the championship for now on and um, we can enjoy the enduro next week. Have you got your co-driver locked away for that one yet? Yeah, I do. So I've got Lachlan and Neef uh, racing with me. Um, so we'll, well, I better double check with him, make sure everything's all good for it. But um, <laughs> you've not asked him yet. Made that announcement. <laughs> I've asked him, but I, I don't know if he's uh, going to say yes or no. But um, yeah, we'll have a look and see. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can have a good, good way to end the series. Sounds good. Good to chat to you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. There's Nathan Hearn driving the number 29. Golf Western Oils car. Let's have a chat to the reigning car sales TCR Australia Series champ. Will Brown, I pumped you up hard for that first race, mate. You did the job in qualifying, but it all went to muck straight away. Yeah, I was sort of expecting that to happen, to be honest. Um, but <laughs> no, it was good. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm going to have quality. But yeah, no, it was a bit of fun. It's, uh, it's good to finally be up there. I seem to be doing it at the end, not the start of the E-Series. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of fun. Hey, next week, Bathurst, it's an enduro with two drivers. Have you got a co-driver lined up yet that you can exclusively reveal to us here? Oh, I'm not sure yet. I've been, I've been siphoning few or three of them. I was hoping one of the Erebus boys might do it with me, but uh, it doesn't look like that's the case. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out soon and get someone. So I'm looking forward to that one, though. Two hours will be a bit of fun. So you're going to have to, like, go through your phone to try to find phone a friend to get a co-driver? or Yeah, no? start paying people from LBRT <laughs> to actually drive for me. No, but uh, that race is really cool, that TCR race. Actually, me and Garth had a mega race um, throughout the whole one, so that was awesome. It was for about 948th in the field, but I think it was actually 20th. But anyway, good luck in this one. Get get your eyes on for qualifying. Yep, thank you. Let's have a chat to Thomas Randall behind the wheel of the ACT Fence Hire 49 machine. You got me there, Tom? Yeah, mate, how are you? Good evening. Uh, I am great. Good evening to you. Uh, how was your first race, just quickly, before we get into this one? Um, pretty horrendous, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> uh, it was no good. I got a, I got a slow down at the uh, the chicane late in the lap, and uh, I, I tried to back off as slowly as possible to not lose much ground. But uh, by that by that stage, I got a 45 second stop go, so the race was pretty much done. So I'm uh, yeah. Much, much more excited for these F3 beasts. So let's see what we can do in uh, in this short qualifying session. 
very quickly, Enduro next week at Bathurst, co-driver required. Do you have one signed up or do you need to go find one this week? I, I need to find one. <laughs> they, they, they want an answer by tomorrow night, so I got I got a lot of calls to make tomorrow. Have you got any suggestions? Uh, how big's your budget? Well, what do you oh, what do you like on a simulator? Rubbish. Okay, so you're you're crossed off the list. I'm busy. I'm commentating it. I can't. Oh do no, I oh, could. <laughs> oh no, it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> no, I'm not sure yet. It'd be cool to get um, it'd be cool to get Rewald or something back, but. Um, I'm not sure what he what he can do now with his restrictions, but yeah, he had a lot of fun in that Supercars Celebrity E-Race, so, um, and he really enjoyed the sim stuff, so that'd be cool. All right, see. we'll see what you can line up during the week. All the best in the second one. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Tom Randall, the ACT fence hire. Number 49 car, he's on top at the moment, Cam, in this qualifying session, 153.847. Jack Doohan, a bit more at home now. No roof, open wheeler, Formula 3 car. This is a bit more his style. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Jack Doohan out there. Uh, it's going to be a big year in the FIA Formula 3 World Championship with Jack Doohan, and we've seen Oscar Piastri, who's been part of this earlier on. He'll be out there as well. Um, and, you know, with the, with the what would have been the Monaco weekend as well, we've, you know, it's, it's just been great to see um, so many young Aussies out there doing it for, for open wheelers. And I'm, I'm just thinking back to what was Australia Day. Remember Will Power winning and Daniel Ricciardo winning on the same day? Yeah, that was um, great. Oh, mate, it's it's uh, it's something wonderful to see young Australian drivers in open-wheel cars, and Jack Doohan I'm looking forward to. And Michael Caruso, let's grab him while we've got him quickly because it's about to get serious here. Robbo, great to see you back again, mate, and I know you love open-wheelers. Thinking back to those days with Astro Amiga, you nearly made a big career over in Europe in open-wheelers, didn't you? Yeah, mate, sorry, you've caught me in the middle of my flyer, but um, <laughs> I am loving these open wheelers. It's uh, it's definitely hard to get your head around the old uh, swapping the cars and what have you, but um, yeah, look, I need to qualify good. That's the yeah, same old. Hey, uh, Robbo, next week, Enduro, two-driver race. There is some rumours getting around online about your co-driver and that you're not going to opt for a big name in the eastern states but there's a bit of chat you might be wheeling in a massive name from western australian motorsport yeah i thought it's about time people to start taking this seriously and um the guy i'm looking at plenty of experience in motorsport and um i think you'll be pleasantly surprised how uh, how well he adapts to it do you think he'll make his own headlines oh He'll make headlines, boys. Don't you worry about that. And um, it'll be the, for the benefit of everybody in this industry. So uh, be on the lookout for that. All right. Big we're news not, breaking not, during the week. We're not going to be naming any names just no, yet, no, no, are we? No, not naming no, them? Clearly not. It's, no. a, it, it's a puzzle that he wants us to solve, and we've got seven days to solve it. So there we go. West Australian talent and a big name. All right, let's, me. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's do some homework during the week. Michael Caruso is on board, the number seven. Valvoline entry tonight as we get rolling through Astron Tech qualifying. Cody Birch is now on top of the times. 136.385. Harley Haber second. 37.26. Dylan O'Keefe is third. A 137.707. Ben Bagwana now jumps up to fourth from John Martin. Jack Dewan, Jay Hansen, Aaron Cameron, Nick Carroll and Tim McReynolds rounds out the 10 as Jordan Mazzaroli now jumps to P5 as we have a look here at the Burston Auto Parts car with Ben Bargwana at the helm, Jason Bargwana over the shoulder and keeping an eye on his young bloke. And looking forward to seeing Barg Senior back in action when the Car Sales TCR Australia Series fires back up at City Motorsport Park, of course, behind the wheel of the Burston Auto Parts GRM Peugeot. And you say good things about people, and around goes Ben. Oops. And notice Jason disappeared. He left. Just to get he out of the top. room. Yep. <laughs> Uh, he's got to get out of there and go and uh, go and watch elsewhere. So he's got it rolling again. A few other drivers have improved in the meantime, and Bargwan has been bumped back to position nine. And Ben spent a lot of time last year in the TCR paddock working with the GRM team as part of the crew on their Renault Megane TCR program with Chris Bither and James Moffat driving the cars. And Ben was part of the crew there working on those machines. He's been spending a lot of time behind the wheel in a Formula Ford as well, so he's spending a lot of time in an open wheeler. So great to see Ben out there. And uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about conversations with Jason, who's been really impressed with how Ben's come along in his racecraft because of Formula Ford. 
So good to see him translated here in Formula uh, 3 as well. It's a gun category, Formula 4. There's no doubt about it. It has paved the way for so many young guns. Speaking of young guns, this kid's younger than his car number. Jet Johnson in the 17 car. He has kicked his dad out of the stim, who did the first race and jumped the board. Boy, he's leapt the curb there and given that Delara a big old belting as he works his way around this Imola circuit. There is the young gun Queenslander, the third generation racer. He does fit the sim a bit better than Stevie J. He does just a little bit. A bit looks a bit more jet spec than Stevie J spec. I think Stevie J is still cleaning up the drink he spilled when he was uh, yeah, having probably. his moment. <laughs> We've got seven and a half minutes left to go in qualifying to Cam and Jed Johnson here just trying to find some clear road and get himself a representative lap time. 20 minutes will be on the clock for the second race tonight at Imola and we get to see the Johnsons together next weekend for the Enduro. So we saw Dick and Steve get to team up twice in the 1000 for Dick's final two starts in 1998 and 99. And fast forward some 21 years and virtually Stephen gets to share with son Jet at the mountain. And given Jet's age, he's been doing some Excel racing. Give him a few more years and there might be a category that they can pair up in at Bathurst sometime, sometime soon down the track. I want to see a link up with Jet and Dick in, uh, in the sim <laughs> as well. What do you reckon? I'm not sure if uh, Dick would even want to touch a simulator. I'm not sure it's his kind of style, but uh, they're all competitive chaps the Johnsons so you never know you've put a, a lovely refreshing beverage right alongside he'd uh, he'd yeah. jump right in <laughs> yeah I can guess what that beverage would be too hey six odd minutes to go Birch is the man he's got half a second nearly on Harley Haver Ransley Sutton O'Keefe the top five Jack Doohan John Martin Jordan Cox Tom Randall and Nick Carroll is the top 10 it's mega competitive in this qualifying session as they determine the grid for the second race tonight on the Imola Grand Prix circuit six minutes now on the clock in Astron Tech qualifying as we keep looking here at Jet Johnson. Ash Sutton here. Boy, oh boy, the traffic is every which way around. And boy, oh boy, there's a car having a serious accident in the background. I thought it was Nathan Hearn. He had a huge one last round at Silverstone. He's had another one now. Let's have a look on the total replay on the run towards turn one through past the pits flat strap on the total replay car coming out of the pits looked like maybe James Golding he dives to the inside and loses control clips Hearn and up and over goes the Gulf Western Oils number 29 car and he disappears and goes back to the pits so tough run for Nathan Hearn we spoke to him just before about his bad luck and he's just had some more well, with uh, five minutes remaining in the session, he could not hit the reset button quick enough to get himself back in the pit lane <laughs> and back yet. Try to settle up in there. I think he hit it on barrel roll six of twelve, but he's got rolling again in number twenty-nine. Let's see if he can put together a time to work his way up the leaderboard. At the moment, it's Cody Bircher on pole position by 0.12 of a second. O'Keefe now P5, 136.924. In the number thirty-three Renault Sport GRM machine. He's a young guy racking up plenty of experience in the last couple of years. Porsche Carrera Cup, Super 2 with GRM, TCR Australia with Ash Seawood Motorsport. And he's a multitasker too. One hand on the wheel, one hand on the drink bottle. Who needs a drink straw when you can just suck down the bottle like that? I'll be honest, I am actually surprised I haven't seen anyone rig up a drink system that they could uh, use oh, off their Don't wheel. give them an idea. Don't yeah. give them any ideas. No, I, they will do it. But, uh, oh, yeah. I'm surprised. Well, I it's an enduro it. next week, so they're going to need some refreshment mid-race yes that is very true just uh, i wonder with some of these drivers what drinks will be in those uh in those bottles that they fire into their system as johnny martin one of our drivers that drove with alan docking racing back in the day over there he was also part of the nissan program for a while as well when they were working in and around sports cars and what was it formula super league or whatever else i think john had a drive in for a while yeah, there he, where he he, up with the soccer teams he had a few goes in a bunch of different open wheeler categories he was very very experienced he's seventh at the moment in this astron tech qualifying session he's 1.2 seconds away from pole position ben bagwana now improves to p10 with three and a half minutes on the clock remember that we will give the drivers the opportunity to finish their laps the session will not finish when the clock does that's different to previous rounds of this series where when the clock stopped, your car did as well and you could not improve your time. And that gives them that little bit more of an opportunity. This, of course, is the Imola Grand Prix circuit. And 
uh, hearing that there's a driver not in the field at the moment. Uh, Braden Wilmington, who I think we've got him on the line, you're not out there in qualifying at the moment. What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm just... Uh, I'm going to sit qualifying out and start rearing this one. I qualified in the last race and got taken out in turn one, and that sort of ruined my chance of getting any points for that race. So I'm just playing it a little bit safe, getting towards the end of the championship. Uh, I want to try and finish it inside the top 15. So this is strategy here. You are going to basically sit at the back of the pack of 40, wait for them all to wipe one another out in the first three corners and drive through the smoke, coal trickle spec. Have I got the race strategy down pat? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We're, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just try and avoid all the, all the carnage and hopefully bring it home inside the top 20. I've done it a fair few times this series already. Um, if there was a hard charge reward for passing the most cars, I'd probably have it by the end of this. But, um, a, yeah. It does make it a little easier if they're all in 28 pieces on the side of the track, but that's smart thinking. You've got to think outside the square. I like this. This could work out well for you. All the best in race two. Thank you. And I've got to thank uh, Signage One, Sledgehammers Apparel Australia, uh, Canberra Mobile Mechanic, um, Blast It, and Facet at 124 Jeweler, and VHT and Car Sales Australia for putting on the series. Ching, ching, ching. What, what I think you got all in there. What about us, Braden? We are working hard in the booth. We didn't get it. Thank you. And, of course, thanks to everybody that, uh, yeah, puts the puts the series on. It's been a really fun uh, E-Series, and it's been good to do this while we're all uh, not racing and parked up. I think he got all the sponsors hey, in there. He even got parked up in there. Well done. The podcast <laughs> parked up. That's another part of our thing. Stop it. So it's, Stop it. Get out of this. <laughs> Let's get back to on track. Hey, good luck in race two. Thank you. There he is, Braden Wilmington. Looking forward to seeing him back behind the wheel of BS5000 open wheelers when that series gets back underway in August at Sydney Motorsport Park. One minute to go in Aston Tech qualifying. Looking here, John Martin pushing on in P8. Bircher and Sutton on the front row of the grid. Have a look at this. Tony Delberto has cracked it. He's parked up. He's podcasted himself. He's he stepped out of his sim. He, he was not happy when we talked to him earlier in the night. He has totally spat it now, and he's gone. He's gone full Italian. We're in Imola, and he's gone full Italian. He's cracked it, and he's left. Tony Delberto. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's re-emerged. I reckon he might take look the Look at the look. look Is he that. taking the Braden Wilmington strategy here of sitting out this one and then firing through the field when they all crash at the first corner? Oh. Not a bad idea. Speaking of a crash, John Martin has just avoid having one. Jack Doohan here with Garth Tander. At the moment, Jack's in P10. Garth Tander in P19. But it's Bircher on top. Clock about to run out. These two will get to the line with... No, they won't get there. It's zero before they get there to do another lap. So no more laps for these two. Bircher looking the goods for pole position. 135, 993. Doohan and Tan to finish off their session connected and combined down at Tamburello. O'Keefe here is P5 coming on through to complete his final lap. Can he work his way up to the second row of the grid or maybe a little bit further beyond? Mazzaroli improves. He jumps to 7th. Randall is 10th. Hansen sits in 15th from Will Brown who jumps to 16th. Here is Tom Randall. The ACT fence hire, number 49 machine. He's 10th at the moment on our timing screens. But it's looking the goods for Cody Bircher here. I can't see anyone knocking him off pole position for the second race tonight in round nine of the Car Sales ARG Esport Cup. Will Brown sits in 16th spot at the moment in car number one. And he hasn't been able to back up the qualifying from earlier on. He improves his last lap to P12. And there is Dylan O'Keefe, who has diary. qualified P5. Dear diary, I call it I qualified OK. Let's have a chat to him now. Let's catch him while he's on the phone. Who are you texting, Dylan O'Keefe? Yeah, and were you swiping left or right? Uh, right, there's some good quality around here, actually. No, <laughs> I was... Um, actually messaging Jordan because last race we had a battle and we just held each other up so much so I just said to him look I'm not really phased where I finish I just want to finish so um let's just work it out for the first couple laps and then um yeah let's have a fight then but last race we yeah held each other up so much and Tim Brooke got away by like 
I don't know, five or more seconds, and then right at the end we're on him. So, yeah, I think we just got to be a bit smarter as teammates. Next week, uh, Enduro, you've already got yourself a co-driver. For those who don't know, who's your co-driver? Uh, yeah, um, my co-driver for next week's Jackson Suisland Harlow. He's, um, yeah, a jet on the Audi TCR car, so I was quick to lock him away. And, um, yeah, really thankful for him to join me as well. Now, do you actually share the same sim and step out, or does he race from home and you just swap over virtually? Yeah, so the way it works is ARG allocate that he's driving with me. Uh, we both enter from our own simulators onto the same uh, session, and only one person can drive at a single time. So uh, the way it works is when I come into the pits and stop the car, he'll jump in from his sim simulator and press uh, drive the car. So it works really well, and I race and have done a great job with it. Look forward to it. All the best for this second race tonight, mate, starting P5. Yeah, thanks, guys. Should be fun. Should be. Dylan O'Keefe there from Gary Rogers Motorsport. Ready to rumble in this second race, Cam. And he's been a, a regular contender so far this year. He's not out of the points fight. He came in third in the points tonight, 45 behind Harley Haber. As we get ready for race two, and it's Bircher and Sutton on the front row. Haber and Ransley row two. O'Keefe and Cox are next from Mazzaroli and Barguana. Martin and Randall rounds out the top ten. Uh, let's have a quick chat to the driver starting P8 in the Burson Auto Parts car. Uh, ben Barguana, you and this F3 car have clicked in the last few rounds. You're back up there again. Well done. Yeah, I know. It's weird, isn't it? I really like the TCR car, but I seem to be doing better than the F3 car. I think we lost the last part of that sentence. Now, your dad's just lurking in the background there. He's just entered the room. Uh, are you going to kick him out for this one? Does he get on your nerves when he's hovering behind you? Oh, yeah, definitely. He tries to tell me how to do it, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who Are you going to team up next week for the Enduro at Bathurst? Oh, if he's quick enough, I might uh, might pick him. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we are. <laughs> hey, you left the room. I noticed you looked to see if he heard you saying that. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you get back to it. Race 2 tonight's coming up. Bathurst started, Emily. All the best. Thank you. There he is, Ben Bagwana, behind the wheel of 117, the Burson Auto Parts car, Cameron. We get ready. Formula 3, open wheelers, Imola, the former home of the San Marino Grand Prix. Tonight, it is home of round nine, race two, of the car stars ARG Esport Cup. 20 minutes on the clock. Your time starts soon. Cody Bircher, Ash Sutton, front row. Series leader Harley Haber and Jaden Ransley, the top two in the title, start on the second row. Great start from Bircher. The wild card has got us rolling to Tamburello as they file out and try to get some room and find some road. Will they all make it out the other side? Does our series points leader emerge from Tamburello without a problem? It all looks okay for our front runners as they run their way on the exit of Tamburello, building up tyre temperature, building up speed in this first lap, 20 minutes on the clock. This is going to be a good one. For the challenge in our racing, the challenge in open wheel racing, in real life as well as getting through the early laps unscathed trying to find some track position and Bircher has the job at the moment he's out in front he controls from Sutton we expected these two to be there Dylan O'Keefe got what he wanted and he's relatively clean although that must have been I think O'Keefe around in the background there were cars involved it was a little bit hard to see who was who in the zoo Habers managed to work his way through he still sits in P4 oh boy oh that's a mess and it's Dylan O'Keefe Missing the front wing, missing the left front wheel. Oh, he was just trying to make it all and I was through. Just talking about how he'd gotten through clean to that point. Mm, and you you are up, the curse. You're the um, curse. In a bad night for my calls tonight. From, uh, from certainly for Dylan O'Keefe, but it's messy. That car is definitely in big, big trouble. So that takes out one of the contenders on this opening lap. The young gun from. GRM is limping and that left front tyre is bouncing. It is not attached and it's time for him to get his phone back out and speed, speed dial Delara because he's going to need some bits. I'm going to be swiping in the opposite direction this time around as Cody Bircher sits at the top. Ash Sutton behind him. So they make their way around at the end of lap number one. Jack Dewan now up into the top three. Harley Haber looking for a big points haul again in the top four with Jordan Cox in fifth. So we're off and rolling and it's been from what we've seen, pretty straightforward for the first lap on this Imola circuit. Of course, the exit of Tamburello runs them down to the Villeneuve chicane, named in honour of the great Gilles Villeneuve, who, of course, had that infamous falling out with 
Didier Peroni here in 1982, and it was just weeks later that the French Canadian was killed at Zolder in the Belgian Grand Prix weekend. Michael Clemente here in the Worth number 15 car, the exit of Tosa, and then the, Ren the run, I should say, back up the hill to Piratella. So many familiar names, and we're just hearing from our spotters. 24 of the 40 plus cars managed to survive the first lap. There was plenty of drama, and I tell you what, Braden Wilmington's call to not qualify, start at the rear. He is 22nd after one lap from 40th in the grid. That strategy has worked again. He said he wanted a top 20, didn't he? And there yep. he is on the screen at the moment as they head back up the hill. Braden Wilmington up in the 22nd position. Tony Delberto, the sad sack earlier in the 17 at the moment. Uh, he should be a bit happier about that. That is definitely the way to work your way through. We look at Braden Wilmington, bottom right of screen, S5000 racer, and of course, son of Gary Wilmington, the former touring car privateer. Tony Delberto here, looking a little bit more yeah, cheaper than earlier on in the night. We must uh, also have a chat to all these drivers where we can and find out who they will get to be their co-driver next week. This is Wheeling here, Delberto fighting with uh, Jordan Mazzaroli, one of our three wildcard drivers. Jordan has raced in this series in previous rounds. He's tested S5000. He's an open wheeler kid on the way up the ladder of the junior categories. But it's Cody Bircher who leads the way. Another of our wildcard drivers. The other is Andrew Waite. Problem here for Jack Doohan. The Red Bull junior team car slipping down outside the 10. Coming to a standstill. And he's done. Total Replay will tell us more. Hearing that this is a case of the motor is kaput, which is uh, is a technical term for the, the engine's not going anymore, and uh, this is going to. Okay, we're hearing that he might have lost his throttle pedal here as well. So, uh, no matter the case, he's in huge drama. He is not going to contend in this one, and a top three or four position goes begging for our star driver. It's been great to have Jack racing with us tonight, the young 17-year-old, of course, the son of the world motorcycle champion Mick Doohan, who's making his own name in junior categories of open wheeler racing. We look back here to James Golding in the Valvoline car, and you can see him working his way through this Ravata section of the Imola circuit, and I think he's one of the guys who is in the mix here for sure to really contend. Position 10 at the moment behind Nathan Hearn, just in front of Tim Brook in that Morris Finance number 64 car. Of course, James Golding will see you in the S5000s when they crank back into life at Sydney Motorsport Park in August. Driving for GRM in that series. That's tight there. Randall with a bit of contact with Jaden Ransley, the second place driver in the series. And Tom Randall there on the microphone. Was that an apology or was that a further discussion. Either way, here's Ransley. Young Kiwi's been mega impressive. The Track Tech car, he's flying the flag for the TCR New Zealand series. We've got drivers representing different categories from under the Australian Racing Group banner. TCR Australia, TCR New Zealand, Trans Am series, Touring Car Masters, V8 Touring Cars, TCR Australia and New Zealand. It's a big mixture and when you add in the wildcard drivers and star drivers, we've had a really great Roll of honour uh, so far for the nine rounds in 2020. 14 minutes remaining in this race. Looking at Tom Randall there inside his sim. And um, he's sitting in the top six at the moment. A fair way off the lead, though. It oh, worked. God. And that, that's a lot more work for Tom yep. Randall. Yep, he's found himself well off the road. It all happened just as we joined the number 49 ACT fence high car. We didn't do it. That's not the commentator's curse. That's the director's curse. That's a different one. That's not us. Every time I start talking, they start falling off tracks at the moment. <laughs> I'm getting a bit gun shy here at the moment. 13 minutes remaining. Tom Randall popping right down the order. So we've got Cody Bircher and Ash Sutton as Ash Sutton just moves up into the lead as well. I'm not sure what's happened here. Is this the oh, here you go. Lead? Ash Sutton jumps in in front of Cody Bircher, Harley Haber and Jordan Cox, your top four, four with Ben Barguana now in the top five, but that was a change for the lead. Ash Sutton now leads from Cody Bircher. Panda fuel car to the lead, but Sutton didn't hit that curb right. He did not hit the curb right. There's a car wrecked in the middle of the road. Looks like it's Will Brown, but Sutton flipped the curb at Villeneuve, slowed him down on the run to Tosa, and then the change happened back to Cody Bircher to take the lead back. So Sutton 
has to do all that work all over again. Harley Haver is cruising along in P3. Cox is next from Barguana. Let's have a chat to uh, Tom Randall. We just cut to your car and it was spinning off the road. Was that driver error? No, I just, it must have been the commentary team and the, and the <laughs> TV that gave me that spin. No, it was obviously it was driver error. Um, yeah, I think I, oh, I've got something in front of me. I think I um, plucked the uh, second gear uh, too early and it just locked the rears, I, I think. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, sometimes it's tough to judge. Very similar, I think, to what happened to me at Monza, you know, and I think two laps to go there. So, oh well, there goes the good run of fortune, or All none right. of. No, no, we'll, uh, we'll let you get back to it. 12 minutes of racing to go, sitting in P21. That's it, thanks, cheers. Some other news there. Jordan Cox, who was running inside the top four, has now dropped back into sticks at the moment. I'm not sure what's happened with Jordan Cox. As we see, the battle for the lead again. Bircher and Sutton banging oh, wheels. Oh, oh, this is Willie. Sutton ran the outside. Got it done. But Tamburello, he'll be compromised on the exit. The run up now to the next chicane of Villeneuve. And in the tow, the slipstream in iRacing really takes effect. Bircher can't get it done here, but it's about the exit of Villeneuve and then run up the inside. Launch to the inside at Tosa. Sutton knows it, but he was in pretty deep there. He had that Dallara squirreling around. The Panther Fuel, 116. There's still 11 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. This is a long way from being done. Just bringing Harley Haber well and truly into contention here. While these two battle, they're chewing up their tyres. Harley Haber, we've seen how good he is on looking after that car right to the end. And you'll see him just in the background there. So Harley Haber looming large in the mirrors here with 11 minutes remaining. Ash Sutton, Cody Bircher, duking it out at the front. And Haber, last time around, a 136.8. The leaders read a 37.1 and a 37.2. They rumble, he'll get to them. There's no doubt about it. There's plenty of time to go. Slipstream at Imola is really strong. Lots of wide open throttle running for these drivers to play with. So they're going to have to really be careful about that as they run towards the run to Rivazza to finish another lap on this long run. No chicane at the run towards the modern Imola, so it's flat chat from this last corner all the way to Tamburello. It's the, as uh, a lot of these drivers in junior formula will tell you, a slipstream's only as good as the other driver you're working with to uh, make most of use of it. And this is now starting to level out a bit. So that's more what we're used to seeing. As we see in the background, Harley Habers still making his way around. But again, that's what they call the old 90% move. Just sit there, wait for that moment, tuck out of the slipstream, make the pass, and then just keep doing that lap after lap, and you won't have to worry about traffic much after that. It's high-speed Congo line driving now, but look at this. Birch is getting a bit impatient, and he probably shouldn't. He's got some time here, and it cost him a run at the Villeneuve run as they head to Toaster now. There is Harley Haver in third spot. He's got mm, seven and a half seconds back to to Jason Barguana. What am I saying? Ben Barguana is what I meant to say. Hearns with him. Then it's Coxton Brook, Clemente Ransley and Golding. Braden Wilmington, that strategy's working up to position 18. Tony Delberto is now up to position 15. I hope he's got a bit more of a smile on his dial than we saw earlier on. He's definitely in the sim if he's running 15th. He hasn't got it out like he did before. <laughs> so just over nine minutes remaining for this one. Let's look at some of the other drivers up and down the order that are in there. Tom Randall, we mentioned, who was in the mix, is way back in 20th now. Cam Mason just up in front of him. Braden Wilmington, 18th. Great job. Barton Moore, another one of our drivers that had experience in Formula 3 at an international level many, many years ago, as we look at Jimmy Golding there on screen. Barton Moore in 16th, just behind Tony Del Perdo. And George Medici, he's had some patches of form in the E-Series so far. He's in 13th at the moment. So just under nine minutes to go, and we're watching James Golding here. He's got the the gloves on. Plenty of focus going on here, and he sits. Ah, uh, uh, he's uh, not popping up on my timing screen at the moment here. I went to say where he was running, and he disappeared from under me. P10 at the moment in the Valvoline GRM car. On the run down the front straight up there. There's the drink bottle. Bit of one hand driving, bit of sustenance as they fire it on down towards. Tamburello for turn one. So James Holding, we're just jumping on with you quickly, mate, at the moment. Good job so far up in the top ten. Nice little drinks break as well. What are you running in the drink bottle? Uh, just plain water, mate. Nothing too special. 
Well, that's a shame on this uh, beautiful, cool evening. But uh, no, mate, I could have said there was a cold beer in there, but yeah. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. We no, wouldn't give those good things. Race. Yes, good man. Definitely, that's the way to be going. Hey, uh, battle pack here. Bit of margin to find to get to Michael Clemente in the Worth car. Have you been? A, is this a case of looking after the tyres on the F3 car, or can you drive it flat out for the full 20 minutes? Uh, you can drive it pretty flat out. Um, had a bit of a battle with Michael before, and he tapped me and spun me around, but uh, I've caught up to him now, so we'll see how we go, so we can get back past. All right, keep it clean. We'll see you a bit later on. See you, mate. James Golding fighting forward, ninth and tenth. We get back to the leaders, Cameron. Seven minutes on the clock. Sutton is the leader. Birch was in behind him. They've changed positions a couple of times in the last few laps. Big toe down the pit straight. Birch will have to go the long way at Tamburello because Sutton will not give him Ooh. the inside in this contact as well. That was brewing. Birch fires it through the sand, dropping componentry on the way through. Comes out the other side, but Sutton is off and running. And I wouldn't mind betting that that car's got damage. Well, with that much contact, yeah, look at that. Had to take to the infield there. And that now moves Harley Haber up into second. Let's look at the total replay. Ooh, so big run. Huge Down run. Turn one. Went to the outside, went in deep, and got a touch. Yeah, that's an interesting one to look into there because ah, there is some debris falling off that car. And that's a the left rear. That's a race concern. They, they didn't give each other enough room. You're gonna make. I'm gonna make the call here. Will be virtual uh, race control, and that looked to me like a bit of a racing incident. They tripped over each other down into the corner. Your call. It's not my job, so I don't have to make a call. You were silly enough to put yourself into it. Uh, let's have a chat to Cody Bircher. What's your take on that scenario there at, at Turn 1, mate? Was it a case of racing incident, or do you feel aggrieved at the contact? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. It's He was running into me a lot. I don't know whether it was Nat Cody or it was just him um, running too close. It's a bit annoying, but what can you do, I guess? I mean, if he's from England or wherever, and he has that neck coat issue, you would think that he'd just take that little bit of extra caution, but obviously not. So, I mean, it's disappointing, but you can't change it now. No, you can't, mate, but you've made a, a great impact in this series. We've spoken to you a couple of times when you've joined us and you've always been running at the front. I guess you're champing at the bit for the real racing to get back underway pretty soon as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the real racing can't come soon enough. Um, hopefully, yeah, like I said before, hopefully we can get going soon, but um, I suppose if everything's done the right way, we sh it shouldn't be too far away. No, I look forward to it. I'm sorry to see that it's unfolded that way, but uh, five minutes to go of racing, get that thing repaired and go out there and turn a few more laps. No worries. Thanks, Wes. There he is. Cody Birch joining us from Orange, young guy who is going places in motor racing. We're looking here at Michael Clemente in the Worth number 15 machine running P8, and he's got himself Cam, a Honda Civic Type R for this year's car sales TCR Australia Series, one of the new drivers to the category this year and there is Ben Bargwana in the Burson Auto Parts car position 7, car 117 with four and a half minutes on the clock to go in this last race tonight and then next week it is one old enduro around the mountain let's have a chat to a guy who knows his way around the track that hosts next week's final round, Garth Tander, tough night at the office for you my friend, this has been a tough one again yeah, tonight sucked. Um, <laughs> just no good. Couldn't put a lap together at all in the TCR car in quality, so I was nowhere there. Started up the back, got caught up in all the shenanigans. Then midfield in this race. And then, um, yeah, just first corner, just got run over, tore the rear of it off, and then had the world's longest pit stop to fix the car. So, a uh, bad night. So, just tooling around now. Hey, next week is the final round. It's a two-driver enduro at Bathurst in the Audi Touring Car. Uh, any chance you've got yourself a co-driver locked in, or is that your mission for this week upcoming? Yeah, I have to do that this week. See if um, I'll send a text message over to New Zealand, see if I can get old mate to get off his couch and get him and the cat to come and give me a hand. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was uh, the co-driver of choice that you might have. If he's unavailable because he's too busy, I don't know, being a New Zealander, have you got a backup plan? Hang on a minute. I'm just adjusting everything. Um, no, no backup plan at the moment. You know anyone? Uh, there's a few people around. Let's see if we can get someone with a budget and make some cash out of this, huh? Oh, I didn't hear that. There's someone talking on the uh, in-race chat. 
so it's hard to hear at the moment. Uh, that's right, mate. I was just suggesting we might see if we can find a pay driver and we can split it. Good deal, huh? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> the way uh, you've got to survive the first corner anyway, the way it's been going lately. We're going to get to turn two and get crashed out. I reckon starting from pit lane is not a bad option. Hey, we'll get out of your ear and we'll uh, we'll join you next week for the final round. Yep, right out. See ya. Good to chat, Garth Dander. He is in the, well, he's not quite in the Tony Delberto postcode of misery, but he's probably a few suburbs away. He's, he's a little bit happier. I think he's in a better sim too. They're, they're set up. It does help when you're in a better bit of equipment to uh, to have a bad night. As we watch Garth Tander still there with two minutes, 16 remaining. Ash Sutton, Harley Haber, the gap, 6.3 seconds. So Ash Sutton has it all in front of him at the moment. Jordan Cox, though, up into the top three. Great job from Jordo. Yep, had a good run. Has been really solid in this series. Here he is in the car six machine. And we're hearing a report through from our spotters that Nathan Hearn's luck has gone from bad to worse. He's been taken out by a lapped car. Oh, second half of the series has been pretty miserable for the Gulf Western Oils driver. Uh, Jordan Cox here, P5, coming into the series, uh, into this round tonight in the points. He's going to bank some serious stuff here if he gets this home with a minute and a half to go. Ransley fourth, keeping the title alive. Only two positions off. The series points leader, Harley Haber. Barguana's had another good night at the office. James Golding's been consistent. Clemente next. Tim Brook has fought his way back up the order. John Martin ninth. Jordan Mazzaroli tenth. And Jonathan Bykoff, we haven't seen uh, Jono much in this race or tonight at all. He sits in 11th and has been staying out of trouble. Here he is in the Turbo Brisbane 68 car, running the livery that he and his dad Shane carried on their Falcon AU V8 supercar back in the days of the Fujitsu series as it was, the development category that's now known as Super 2. And uh, in more recent times, they sold that car but bought another AU Falcon and ran it in a similar livery in the Kumo V8 Touring Car Series. Here's Ben Barguana in a fight with uh, James Golding. He's riding behind in the Valvoline machine. So a couple of GRM drivers. There is Ben Barguana with his Bathurst winning dad, Jason, looking over the shoulder, of course, Bargs and Garth Tander, the winners at Bathurst in 2000 for GRM in a Holden Commodore VT. But the Peugeot that is now Bargs' weapon of choice in TCR is a very different car. And Barguana sliding around here. Golding putting the pressure on. The clock is really counting down. There'll be one lap to go as they fire across the line on the virtual Imola circuit. Golding's in the toe now. It's a case of can Barguana stave him off. Well, Golding moves out to the outside here. Does he get a run on him? Great to see Jason Barguana looking as inconspicuous as possible, wearing fluorescent orange in the background. <laughs> and Ben doing a great job holding him off. Look at this. You can see even the father watching on, just getting a bit edgy there. As Jimmy Golding locks in, he's under the rear wing. Pulls out. They go side by side, but Ben Barguana's done a great job to hold on. Wonderful track management there from Ben Barguana. And he holds off Jimmy Golding. Jimmy Golding has another look at him, though. He straightened off the exit of Tosa. He made a late turn in. Jason's disappearing. Fleuro man's off out the door. And, now, and Ben is off up the hill on this final lap in the final race of the night. Penultimate round of the Casas ARG Esport Cup. Battle for position five. Dropping Dak back down the hill. This little double right through Aqua Minerale. Back up the hill. The run to the Variante Alta Chicane. And we're looking at James Golding at the wheel, zeroing in, trying to grab one more spot. There is our race leader, Harley Haber, in P2. But it's Ash Sutton who has got the job done, wins race two in this penultimate round of the series. Our points leader, Harley Haber, is home in position two. This is the good fight. Golding's going for fifth, looks to the outside. at Ravats are trying to get the run. Back down the inside, Barguana's wide. This is the chance for Golding. Got it done. P5. He will get it on the run to the chequered flag. Little mistake from Barguana. Has barely put a wheel wrong, but he puts one wrong right at the wrong time, and he loses the spot. Just one slight overrun on that corner, and that's all James Golding needed to get through, but a wonderful drive as well by Ben Barguana. They gave each other wonderful room, and Ash Sutton gets the job done. It was an interesting little battle early on, though, we saw, and uh, hopefully we can check in now with Ash Sutton and get the other side of that story, Noon, from the contact we saw early on. Let's have a chat to our race winner. Hey, Ash Sutton, Aaron Noonan here uh, in Melbourne, Australia. Great to have a chat to you. Well done, but what happened 
with Cody Burchill? Was there a bit of uh, net code stuff there? Was there contact? What was your take? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, just a bit of net code. Net code seems to be the devil for me. That seems to have ruined this, uh, shall we say, championship campaign. And you just saw a prime example of it. There's space between the cars, but contact was made. And I even get the zero contact on my end of the um, screen. So, yeah, it's a real shame, really, because it was a good battle up to that point. Uh, you've had not much luck in the second races of all of these rounds in the last four or five weeks. It must be nice to get on the other side of that and actually get a win. Yeah, to break the, the F3 curse, shall we say, <laughs> yes. is, uh, is nice, but uh, it's just a little bit too late in the championship. It's uh, Yeah, the damage has already already been done. Hey, speaking of championships, what's the, the state of play with the VTCC? Uh, so I think we're going to kick off in the start of August. Um, so it's going to be a hectic second half of the season, shall we say, but um, yeah, they're going to cram it all in. No, it's the way to do it. Lots of racing to finish us off wherever we are. Uh, around the world. Uh, do you have a co-driver for next week's round, the final round of our Casas ARG Esport Cup? Who can you rope in to, to drive with you in the Enduro for Bathurst? Uh, I have got a co-driver. Um, I believe we're going to try and do a little announcement on that. So, yeah, keep okay. your eyes peeled. Come on, give us a hint. You can't be like no, that. No, unfortunately give us not. Big name? <laughs> Is it a big name? Not. Would we have heard of him here? Uh, you may have. Can you bring David Addison out? Can we get him? No, 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 no. Can no, we no, make no, David no. Addison out? <laughs> no, no, we... We well, don't if he want tries the voice as bad as his commentary, then we're going to have an issue, aren't we? <laughs> uh, we cannot let the voice of the British Touring Car Championship anywhere near our series. All right, we will stop pressing you for your co-driver information. We look forward to hearing uh, an announcement online during the week, and we'll, uh, we'll chat to you next week. Lovely. Cheers, guys. Thank you. There he is, Ash Sutton, the former British Touring Car Champ. Great to have him as a guest driver in our car sales ARG Esport Cup. Cam, let's recap the results, and it was Ash Sutton, the winner from Harley Haber. 7.8 seconds the margin in the end. Jordan Cox, P3. Jaden Ransley, great job. P4, he keeps the title fight alive going to Bathurst next week. And the battle at the end of that race was really James Golding and Big Barguana. Golding getting it done as a result of the last corner and the run onto that pit straight. So a great job there. Michael Clemente, Jordan Mazzaroli, Johnny Martin, no stranger to open wheelers in ninth, and Tim Brook uh, rounded out our top 10. John Bikoff 11th from George Medici, uh, Barton Moore, P13 from Tony Delberto should be much happier with that. Peter Hurd, Braden Wilmington, great strategy. Got to 16th after starting at the back. Cam Mason, Aaron Cameron. Cody Bircher had repairs to his car. He got back out to finish 19th. And Michael Caruso rounds out the top 20. So round nine is done. There is now just one round left to go. The car sales, uh, ARG Esport Cup. In seven nights' time, we come to you from Mount Panorama for our Bathurst Enduro, the final round, double points round, two drivers per car, the Enduro, Thursday, June 4, from 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. That's us done. We're all over. Two races done tonight. One big one to come next week when we will crown the champion. On behalf of Cameron Vandendungen, I'm Aaron Noonan. And on behalf of the entire Australian Racing Group team, thanks for joining us for this round. We'll see you in a week's time for the final round from the mountain.